This is the 31st Lap Podcast, recorded live in the studios of FingerLakes1.com in downtown Seneca Falls, New York. And now, your hosts, Rich Post, John Bonas, Mike Mallett, and Chris Marquardt. Good evening and welcome to this edition of the 31st Lap. Mike's got his phone back. He's here in the studio. Rich is with me in the so, studio. So he's flashing around the yeah, he's, yeah, he's just showing off. He's got all of his stuff back. Yeah, John, I, somebody's got to make it make you you know feel like the paparazzi's somebody, here taking our photos. Somebody's got to make Rich famous. Yeah, somebody's got to do it. Good Rich, luck. Good luck with that. Rich is Rich is or, uh, Rich is dying to be made famous. John desperately wants to be the one to do it. John couldn't join us tonight, but nonetheless, we are here for episode number 50 of the 31st Lap. Celebrating uh, the beginning 50. of our second year. 50 shows now. Really? Can you believe that? 50 no. episodes. I didn't think we'd make it past five. Well, we did. Mm. If, you, <laughs> if you could believe that. I think every week they let us come <laughs> back, I'm still shocked. <laughs> well, I mean, we uh, 126 live viewers last Thank week. Thank you. How cool was that? Hey, thanks, thanks to all the fans for listening number. at home. Yep, and, and we got back That's up on awesome. the number one spot. Uh, Leapfrog back over episode two of the Chewed Gum Podcast. <laughs> 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 Thank so, God. So... <laughs> Uh, nothing nothing against them, but if we don't beat something called chewed gum, we're in trouble. That's I right. like gum. Racing season, racing season. Well, winding don't down. say that word. It's not winding down. Okay. There's right. just less racetracks to go to. Downshifting. Yeah, if you haven't noticed, yeah, Mike's that, starting to twitch. And I'm almost starting there. to go through a withdrawal here. I got a couple weekends left, and I don't know what I'm going to do. <laughs> I got Hagerstown. What are you going to do? You're going to take a nap, and then you're going to start Oh, talking. I am going to take a nap. You're going to take a nap. Tired. You're going to start talking about how you hate Florida. Then you're going to start talking about how you hate NASCAR and Daytona. And then yes! you're going to be back on your regular rotation tracks. Then I'll be in Florida again. Just like that. <laughs> <It'd be easy. laughs> Coming to you live from the lavish FingerLakes1.com studios in downtown Seneca Falls. Thanks for joining us. we got a big show on deck for number 50. We're streaming live online, uh, FingerLakes1.com. Follow the links to see the show. As it happens, we're going to have Jessica Power on a little bit later on, Ryan Susi and Justin Harris, both going to be joining us. Justin coming up with a top five finish out there at Eastern States behind Brett Hearn and Ryan Susi picking up the win at Black Rock Speedway in that Dutch Hogue National Open modified portion, outlegging nonetheless Alan Johnson for that uh, victory in Dundee. Uh, we're catching up with all those guys. We've got all sorts of results. Breaking news. From the New Egypt Speedway, we're going to be on top of that. And, of course, we'll give you a recap of Eastern States Weekend. Yeah, uh, Eastern States. Mike. I love Eastern States. I said that 658 <laughs> times in the grandstands on Saturday and Sunday. <laughs> Friday did not go so well at Eastern States. No, it looked well, like you could happened. swim in the you infield. You could have swam in the infield. It was uh, <laughs> it was a disaster. <laughs> you know, I, I think I saw a picture of uh, so, somebody decked out in full rain gear oh, yeah. w- with an inner tube. Yeah, sitting in the center of the yeah. pond. Yeah, it was pretty awesome. Yeah, it was not... Uh, not a uh, good night for racing. They try. They got cars on the track, but it just it wasn't going to happen. You know how you can sit there and you know, and you give them an A for effort, you know, the A for trying, and you're like, there's no way, dude. There's no chance. I don't know what you're doing. I'll give you credit for trying, but just stop. It, it, ain't, it ain't happening. You know, it ain't happening, and it wasn't happening. It was just so damp and so wet. It rained all day, and the weird part was on my way down, you know, I was, I was texting back and forth with a couple of people in the pit area, and they're like, yeah, it's pouring here, and I'm like... I'm at like Roscoe and the sun's out, which is like an, not even an hour away. And I'm like, what? And it just never, it didn't let up. You know, we got there about four thirty, five o'clock and it just, it just had like a little bit of a mist in the air, but it was just so humid and damp. There was just, can't do much you, you, there's the nothing you can do. Point. I mean, it rained all day. The infield's flooded and you got a mucky mess. I didn't even go into pits. Like I looked, I went to walk across the track and I go, you know what? I'm not starting my first night out six feet deep in mud. It's no. For, for nothing. But no, no, I knew it was going to rain, you know, and I'm like, if I want to see somebody, I'll see them at the 31st lap. <laughs> <laughs> That's where they're going to be. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I sent you gentlemen a picture of yeah, that. Yeah, I like that picture. Yeah, yeah you know, the 31st nice lap uh, adult entertainment center. No. <laughs> 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 no. no not, it was, uh, not on most nights. It, no, it was, uh, you know, that's the... Their version of the infield bar at Syracuse. Uh, good times. Love the food down there. Maxwell's. I had about nine steak sandwiches this weekend with cheese and peppers. No onions. Gives me heartburn. So, you know. You're getting I, old, dude. Pff, I'm getting. Just you <laughs> I got to just say happy birthday to my friend Tina. She uh, turned 30 this, this uh, yesterday. So happy birthday to her. And uh, she went with me down to Eastern States. 
Is she coherent right now to hear that? <laughs> That's uh, I think she's actually going to be good till this Listen, weekend. I'm she's, just saying. I know what No, she put on like her Facebook 30, that yeah. she didn't get to drink much. And, yeah, I remember my 30th birthday was not a pleasant. It was not a celebration of uh, celebration of fun. I can tell you that. It was a celebration of uh, this sucks. I'm not in my 20s anymore. <laughs> you know, I think I was over that in about 10 minutes. Yeah, me too. But, you know. Still, the fact that it's always easier to say, yeah, I'm, my late, I'm in my late 20s, and now I'm like, yeah, I'm 30. <laughs> and everybody listening at home is probably like, yeah, screw you guys. <laughs> <laughs> I got no complaints. No, nah, I, I can't complain. I can't complain. You know, I, I've, I've gotten to do more racing and uh, see different things and go different places, so how can you complain? You know, the... Yeah, youth was wasted not going to enough races. I think that was yeah, it. I you know, agree. I never. I well, twenty five on is where I started going hardcore. I did. I did officially count. I'm at a hundred and six races right now. One hundred and six. One hundred six officially. Damn. Yeah, and this weekend if we get Hagerstown in, which Saturday looks okay. I don't know about that hurricane screwing up my weekend. Maybe it'll wait a little. bit. I'm hoping it stays out the sea there. You know, stay out there. I don't need that. I want to see some sprint car racing. And modifieds, and modifieds, and modifieds, wasn't and it? Wasn't it a couple of years ago when we had a snow cano that was that was called for the area, and all the schools shut down, like all of them at one time. Then we got before, nothing, and we got nothing. Yeah, we've had those a bunch of times. I'll be interested to see what. District. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see what happens with the with this. You know how schools and stuff will respond. You're supposed to get four to eight inches of rain in a day. If that if that actually hits, like they say it could hit. Uh, we'll have to wait and see, and you know, hopefully it won't affect racing too much. But again, not a lot really going on. You got five mile point uh, national quarter mile dirt championships this weekend too. So the rock championship will be ch- decided down there. Uh, I'm making the trek to Hagerstown just because I haven't been there this year. So, uh, and I haven't been to the. F- they've renamed the Oktoberfest 350 to the Brawl in the Fall or, or whatever yeah. they're calling Boy, it. Boy, how so. original! How many places are going to use Fall Brawl? It's the or same thing as there? listen. Holy it's crap. the same thing as the Icebreaker. Like how uh. many tracks use the Icebreaker? It's icebreaker. There's not ice many. Jam. Yeah, there's not many names you can use. Ice jam's not bad, but icebreaker. I mean, there's. You know what? Yeah, you know what? The, you know what? What else are you gonna call a race in the fall? I don't know. Oktoberfest. I've seen that seven thousand times too. <laughs> I don't know how much. How much you stop thinking about the first thing that comes to mind and put some effort into it? Uh, Just a Halloween little. Havoc. I've seen that one four million fifty eight times. I uh, we, we were at we were at Black Rock. And, and we were putting that show together for the street stocks. Uh, I'm not going to lie. I thought the World 100 was a cool name, and we we, we took it and made it the street yeah, stock. Yeah, how'd that work one. out for you? <laughs> <laughs> now, I think it's, now I think it's called the Empire 100. Or yeah, because like they, had, they got yeah. told they can't use it, right? I don't know. That's I, the rumor. I don't know. Heard. I don't know. I didn't get the You weren't there for that? Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Take a note. Did you take your number on the way out the door? <laughs> it was the, w- the World of 100 Cautions last week. Was it? I didn't, oh, did you go? God. Yeah. Rich had a great time. Did you have a good time, though? I had a real good time. I mean, don't get me wrong. It was a great time. We were there all day. Oh, that's how Eastern States was on Saturday, too. I mean, we started late, you know, getting the track ready, and then they ran the small block time trials, big big block time trials, excuse me, and then, you know, heat races and all that. And then uh, we get done with the big block stuff and the open sportsman show, and then we started all over. My only gripe was it took way too long for them to switch over between the two shows. I mean, it was almost two hours. And then wow. they had to cut short the small block race by 12 laps, which would have made a difference. No, probably not, because Hearn was going to win that race, because he was just disgustingly but, good but again. You, you never know. But um, Yeah, exactly. And I, I sat through all that other stuff. You know, this is the fan of me coming out. I sat through all that other stuff, and and the curfew starts, hits at midnight, and we can't go 12 laps. Like, 12 laps, man. Okay? I sat through. I was here. I watched the sprint car race, the 305s, which was, wasn't very good. <laughs> it was it was a time trial race, and it was, a, you know, and Justin Barger had, uh, borrowed a 305 from uh, his good friend Bo Corsa, um, a rider engine, actually, first one that rider has built. He went out, and he he just smoked them. I mean, smoked them. Gary Palmer Jr. finished second, you know, uh, on his, let me say, handful, about 15th, 17th start, something like that, in his sprint car. So, you know, he did a good job, but he goes, yeah, come on. <laughs> he goes, how many sprint car races has he, has he won? He goes, he's won more than I've driven in. You know, like, what am I going to do? You know, so, yeah. it, so, it's tough to compete with that. Yeah, and then, you know, we had sportsmen. And the thing that I, I don't, I understand you need to make money on these weekends. I do. You know, and we've talked too many divisions or whatever. And having an open sportsman race and a crate sportsman race on the same day when a lot of the cars were in the, the same cars. 
I mean, Brian Crumble won them both. He had two different cars. But there's a ton of guys, a ton just, of guys trying to just took run the, the chip, open. just took the chip out. Yep. And let's run the open show. And it's like, I didn't need both of those. I would have rather saw the entire 358 race. How many pure open sportsmen were there? I I I could not tell you, uh, but I would say a handful. I wouldn't say it was not, mo- not enough. I wouldn't say it was. Ma- I don't think it was. If you took the crates out of that race, I don't think it would have been a full field personally. But that I, again, I didn't go do the math. I didn't count. You know, I mean, Danny Tyler was there. Anthony Prego was there. I mean, no, I know those guys have open motors. So there were open motors in the field. And again, Brian Crumble won with a different car. He won both of them. He just, again, kicked their ass. I'll say it because that's what he did. I mean, he was just <laughs> he was just good all weekend, you know. So I, I don't know. That was the only thing that's disappointing because you're there. You want to see. Like, my whole thing is whenever I go to these big races, I want to see the two premier big divisions, yep. which on this weekend were the 358s. In the big box. In the big box. And I will say, look at that. I'm even talking more about them than I am sprint cars. Look out. Look at so. that. <laughs> is this, is this a turning of a leaf? Yeah, they, no. They were only 305s. So. Yeah. So, no, but that, you know, that, and that's my thing. So, that's my gripe about that. Other than that, they did the best they could. I'll give them that. It sucked having Friday get rained out and change everything else up. And uh, so, that was that. And uh, the other news that came out, uh, Mike Sanchelli, I believe, is done now at the Orange County Fair Speedway. He is no longer... Uh, going to be the race director, et cetera, there. His decision, their decision. Um, I have not read the official story, but I, I think it was his, actually, his choice to retire. But if you get this week's copy of Ari Auto. Retire? Yeah, retire or get yeah, out or yeah, whatever you, you want to call it. Nobody, yeah. No, he retires. Nobody, but. no, th- as, as much as you might want to retire, <laughs> racing, racing does not allow you to retire. It so grabs you by the throat. I'm going to, I'm going to retire. I'm going to retire. I'm retiring. You're not going to retire. You'll never well retire. I'm you're retired. Not, you're never. Gonna, yeah, you're, you're retired for, for tonight. Until February. No. You'll be, you'll be, <laughs> no. You'll be taking no. a couple month vacation and coming back. No. Yeah. And, and that's not, yeah. that's not even accurate either because he's going to do a race in November, hands down. I'm sure he's going to find some place to go. And he's yeah. got, he's got indoor races throughout the winter. Yeah, I You're announcing down in. It's possible that I'll be at Baltimore, yeah. Yeah, so yeah. the whole thing about I don't, that. Now, I, I didn't not, see I it in here officially, but I know from what was said at Eastern States and everyone that talked to him that uh, he won't be there again. That that was the, the hot topic because he was thanking people and everything else. So uh, what else I got this week? I, I don't, I don't want to go too much. Well, that's Eastern States. I mean, we can give you the results of Eastern States if we need to, but I figure we'll do that a little bit later on right before we get Justin on. Yeah, why don't we do are that? we getting close I mean, to getting, getting Justin on right yeah, now? I mean, I've done who, who won, <laughs> who basically won everything. Who do you want to get on first, Rich? I, I think we're going gonna to shoot for Ryan, Ryan Susie. Okay, so you want to you want to talk about the BlackRock race? We'll and, talk about uh, the BlackRock race, and he's got a... Well, let's do this. I'll give you the results of the BlackRock race. I'll go get Ryan lined up here. And All right, well, I'll get the results, and I know you were there, so I'll let you... Uh, I'll let you uh, bag this one, so to speak. So, Whoops. all right, uh, everybody got to watch Rich leave. Sorry, guys. <laughs> nice job, way to go. All right, so while I'm taking a look at here, yeah, I'm cheating here. So Ryan Susi uh, picked up the win over Alan Johnson, Chris Heil, uh, Brady Fulton, Ray Bliss. Uh, that was your top fives in the modified main event. Um, the Crate Sportsman feature out at uh, Black Rock this past weekend: Boyd McTavish, Greg Martin, Brad Roos, uh, George Bossy, and Fran Hilton. The top five there. Uh, the late model feature, Bryce Davis, A.J. Kingsley, Billy Van Pelt, Greg Bellier, and Shane Tenace. Uh The Empire 100 Street Stock main event, won by Tenny Morseman Jr., Chris Fisher, Rich Green, A.J. Postrobowski, and uh, Earl Zimmer. It's your top five there. IMCA Empire Series event, uh, Dale Swikert, Dan Searles, Eddie Seitz, George Foltz, and Ryan Scott. And then the four-cylinder feature, I thought I'd see Rich Post's name here. I know, right? Uh, Bill no, Werner. No Rich. No rich in this one. Bill Warner, Jason Gleason, Russ Wassner, Cody Baker, and James Warner. So that's your results from uh, Black Rocks uh, modified shootout. Now, is it the National Open is that the technical name for this weekend? Is that what it was? So there's uh, there's that. And again, as I mentioned, it's pretty funny. Right on the same page. Uh, Saturday, November the third, modified Empire uh, finale. Seventy-seven laps, six thousand dollars to win. Out of Black Rock plus uh, the Enduro hundred laps, ten thousand dollars to win. Uh, $5,000 to win if there's less than 100 cars. And then uh, some demo derbies. So uh, racing starts at 1 o'clock, and they're saying it's going to be a quick show. I hope so. Cause Are we going to go? If the uh, Are you going to go? Where? That race of BlackRock, are you allowed to go there? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> that's, a, that's a strange question. I know, that's why I asked it. <laughs> that's, a, that's an uncomfortable question. That's why I asked it. I don't, I don't think that I don't have Bombas here to argue with, so. Think, well, well, first <laughs> of all, listen. 
<laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't think there's anything saying that I can't go. Um, I don't think there's anything saying that I'm going to go. So no, you're not going. I don't plan on it. No, yeah, November se- uh, even with a even with a demo derby, I figured you'd be all over that. You you know, I've seen. I was counting on it last night when I was working on the show from from Hartford Fair. Um, I've been at eighteen or twenty derbies this year. You're done. My season's pretty well done. I got some videos left to produce, and that's mm-hmm. one of the things that you know the amount of time that that takes in between shows and stuff like that, and, and especially if you lose a little bit of ground. Like, we were real busy that month of October. We were real right. busy. And um, I lost a little bit of ground there, so I'm trying to play catch-up. At this point, my season of, of, of traveling and going and seeing stuff is probably about wrapped up. I don't I don't really want to go see anything more necessarily. I want to get caught up with what I need to finish at home and then focus on our uh, our, our likely live venture at the NPP show in, in Syracuse and mm-hmm. – Mm-hmm. And probably just wrap up the season and start focusing on 2013. We've already got something like uh-huh. 13 or 16 shows in the works for next year. Your derby even, stuff? Yeah, without even, yeah Crashed without Empire even, Films? Smashed Empire Films. Smash, Crashed Empire, Smashed Empire, it's all. Crashed, em, Crashed Empire Film gives gives the wrong uh, inference. Smashed Empire Films is far more accurate. <laughs> I'm going to call it call it a spade, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can see how much I listen when you're talking. So. I know. You, Sorry. You, you completely zoned out. Normally, I'm, normally, I was by, the time, wake, I was normally w- by the time I'm here, I'm so like burned out. Like Thursday night is like, if I can just get through this, I got one more day of work left and I'm good to go. How are we doing with the uh, the online chatter over there? Anything exciting going on? Anybody else uh, have uh, anything to say about Eastern States? Anybody go to Eastern States that's out there listening? Or BlackRock, if they went to BlackRock, give us your thoughts on BlackRock. I'd like to know because, again, it was you know I had a, I always go to Eastern States because I love Eastern States. I will say it for the 97th time tonight. Love Eastern States. And uh, I'm still, I mean, I'm still in shock that Brett Hearn Swept. Won both races. I mean, it's not a shock because it's Brett Hearn, but it's just impressive. You know, and, to, and, and give Shane Andrews some credit here. He uh, he absolutely named it. Hearn won this year's Triple Crown in dirt modified ra- dirt car modified racing. He, he won the too. he won, he won the highest paid show at Le- Lebanon. Lebanon. He won the three highest paid paying shows in terms of dirt car sanctioning. He won right. at Lebanon Valley seventeen thousand five hundred. He won at the mile fifty thousand dollars, and then he won Eastern States twenty thousand dollars. So all said and done, almost ninety grand. Yeah. And a little over a month, I'm like, uh, I asked him, I go, is this your month of money? He goes, I don't know what it is, but it's been a pretty good month. Yeah, he said, he said it must be somebody's, he yeah. said, I don't know who's smiling on me, but I'll take it. Yeah. And I'll keep yeah, it, something that effect. It's it was, impressive. And he now, was, he's supposed to be in Hagerstown this weekend. That was, uh, that's what his website said. That's what the schedule's called for, so. Which, uh, by the way, he did just fine at last year. <laughs> yeah, won both of those races, yeah, too. Yeah, he both so. of those. Yeah. You know, we were talking about that, uh, when we started this show last year, we were talking about Jimmy Phelps, how he had won... Or uh, he had almost won exactly what you were just talking about. He almost won the he New Yorker. He was like second or third, right? Yeah, he and was second or third in the New Yorker. He almost won uh, the, well, the Lebanon was, Valley show. Yeah. And then he then he broke at Syracuse, right? Or he got a left Syracuse, front. He got a flat tire or something, something like that. Something yeah. crazy like that. He broke at the Victoria uh, yeah, then Eastern and States, then Eastern he won States. Saturday Eastern States, and then Sunday he got in that accident, right. but he was right there in the mix. This year, same thing happened, but uh, but yeah, so that's, yeah, we kind of, I gave all the results from BlackRock, then we moved back to Eastern States, talking about Hearn and, and so on, but uh, we'll get right into it here uh, with the interview, right, Rich? We want to yeah, have, have at it. Rich, now I know you were there on Sunday, and I, uh, we're speaking now with Ryan Susi, the winner on uh, Saturday out there at the BlackRock Speedway, and uh, Ryan, welcome to the 31st lap. Thanks for having me on, guys. So how you doing? How's it feel, you know, to get a big win out there at BlackRock, you know, beating Alan Johnson? That That's never a bad thing. Well, it was awesome. It was a great win for us, too. I'll finally be able to close the deal and get one of these big races in our, in our uh, under our hat. But uh, everything kind of worked out good. It was a good day. We were fast right off the trailer, and we just capitalized on a uh, good starting spot and did everything we had to do to put ourselves in the position to win. Now, I noticed you, uh, the, the sail panels were uh, prevalent on Saturday out of Black Rock. Is that something you're accustomed to, or is that something you were doing for the first time? Have you done it? you have experience with that? Uh, for the most part, we don't ever run with them. Uh, Ransom, they let us run them one night a year, and we had just so happened to uh, be suspended for that race, so I didn't even get to, get to run the sail panels this year. But other than that, we went to Fulton during the, for the 200. That was the only other time we had them on this year, so... Uh, 
it's not really a huge deal for us. I mean, we might add a little more stagger or something, but the cars don't handle that much different without them. Do you, you know, we, we talked to a lot of guys. Some guys love those things, and some guys just utterly hate sail panels. Are you neutral on them, or do, or do you enjoy running with them just for something different? Or uh, I'm not really for or against them. The car worked good on uh, Saturday, but I don't think it's a huge feeling. Like, the only way I think you're ever going to feel a difference, at least me, maybe I'm not as good as some of the other guys, is if you go out there back-to-back on the same track and try them. Um, car, if the car's handling, whether you got sail planners or not, it's going to feel about the same. Um, I, don't, I don't think it's a huge advantage, though. Well, take us through your 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 2012 season. You know, we know you got the win here at Black Rock. How did the rest of your year go? Uh, we actually opened up real good. Uh, time trial outside Pullet Ranch was a one opening night. We were able to win another time in July. Um, like I said, we had a had a week where they said I was a little too aggressive and I had to sit out a week. Other than that, you know, we had up until that point a top three or four in the points at Ranceville, and uh, we didn't get to travel as much as we'd liked. We got to Ken Agua a couple times, but you know, money was tight this year. We're a pretty small, uh, small team, so you know it's hard for us to travel. But uh, for the most part, we did good. We had a lot of fun. You know, I think we uh, left a little on the table, especially you know at the home track there, at the with our our one week off. That uh, you know we would have liked to done a little better. But you know, next year we're going to work on the consistency, and you know, hopefully we can travel a little bit more and go after the championship. Now, how is we racing weekly at Ransomville? You know, we don't get a chance to get out there all that much, you know, but we hear the names and see the guys that are racing there. That, that's no easy task to win a couple of feature events out there. Oh, you know, we got some really great guys. P. Picknell, uh, arguably, at least up in this neck of the woods, the best driver, you know. People often say Brett Hearn, you know, he's got 800 wins and everything like that. Well, our Brett Hearn up here is P. Picknell. He's got <laughs> probably close to 40 championships between the three tracks up here and hundreds and hundreds of victories you know anytime you can beat him it's always special but uh you know we're racing against chad brockman and todd burley and some other really good guys so it's tough it's you know any anytime you get to a modified race it's tough these guys are the best there is so it's tough to win but i think Ransville, especially in the 358 is one of the tougher tracks what what's the plans here going forward now are are, are you going to hit any more of these shows here at the end of the year i know black rock's got another show coming up in a couple weeks you know six thousand dollars on the line to win there uh are any plans to go to a few of these? A uh, couple of the what's left? I mean, I don't. Know, I think there's only a few end of the year shows to to, to go. Yeah, we're uh, actually going to head down to Black Rock. We got the guaranteed starting spot with our win on Saturday, so we're going to go down there and try to look again. Uh, hopefully, the car's as good as it was on Saturday, and we can be in contention there. You know, we know there's going to be a lot of outsiders coming in from Pennsylvania and stuff like that. And, um, it's going to be tougher, obviously. I, I'd assume there's probably about fifty cars and. You know, you're going to have, like I said, some guys possibly go down and some of those other guys that wouldn't normally go, I guess. So I know Higby's coming and Steve Payne's car, so it'll be tough. But, yeah, um, we're going to go down there, and then after that, we're done for the season, at least with the outdoor stuff. Well, now you say outdoor stuff. What are, what are you going to do on the indoor stuff? Uh, actually, on Sunday, I landed a ride from uh, with Mel Rabb, a longtime car owner from up here for the TQ Midgets. We're going to be in Baltimore, Providence, and Atlantic City driving the TQ Midgets for the indoors. Um, something I've never done, um, midgets, but I've raced hundreds of go-kart races indoors. You know, we used to go to Convention Center and Syracuse and all the other indoor shows in the Northeast and even some down North Carolina and stuff. So, you know, we have a lot of experience with that, just not with the midget. So hopefully we can have a good run indoors, you know, make some of those shows and maybe in con- be in contention if everything works out. Again, chatting here on the 31st lap, Ryan Susie, winner here of uh, the National Open out at the Black Rock Speedway this past uh, Saturday. Now, you talk about going indoor racing, you know. Is it is it your impression, you know, I like to call it full contact racing. It, was it the same for you in the go-karts? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> um, you're going really, really fast, and there's not a lot of room, not a lot of room for uh, air either. And with the TQ, it's going to even be that much difficult because the car is obviously quite a bit bigger. But, um, you know, it, it's fun to get indoors. You know, you have a, everything else is off for the season, so you got a lot of big games. Big name guys, you know, you're going to be up against. We're going to be up against Ted Christopher and some of the you know, Joey Payne. We're going to be up against some other guys we wouldn't normally be able to race with. So hopefully, we can uh, we can get the car dialed in and be able to compete with those guys. But yeah, it's definitely full contact and it's really tough on the body. A lot of people don't realize, you know, you're pulling way more G forces indoors than you are outdoors. So you got to have your physical physical conditioning up 
especially for the indoor shows. Yeah, I've been to a f- uh, few of the indoor shows. I've worked a couple of them, and, and just watching the beating you take, you know, because you're racing on concrete and it's not smooth. And in some cases, there's bumps and everything else, and, and it's uh, it's definitely a challenge. I, I can't imagine doing it. You know, and then as you start the day, the track has a little bit of rubber on it, and then as you go, the track gets faster and faster and faster as it lays the rubber down. So it's it's got to be fun though at the same time. Oh yeah, it's definitely it's definitely different, um, especially being dirt guys. We don't get to race in the rubber very often, so uh, you know when a dirt track rubbers up, it makes it one lane. But when it's indoors, you're always one lane. So like you said, you got to be full contact and ready to go and get your nose in there anytime you can make a pass. Um, I'm a, like I said, I'm not very familiar with these cars. Um, they're they got a lot of horsepower for their weight, but, you know, handling-wise, it's going to be me getting comfortable and, you know, getting getting a good feel for it early on. Like I said, I'd, I'd be really happy just to be able to make the shows, especially Atlantic City, you know, that's the big one. Um, it, it's a dream come true for me. I grew up watching the convention center back in the, you know, late 90s. These guys race, and it's funny because most of the guys are still racing that I was watching 10, 15 years ago, and they're still in the same cars. So it should be a lot of fun. I'm really excited for that. I just got to say Thanks to Mel Rapp for giving me the opportunity. Hopefully we can make him proud and uh, be in contention. That's all we can hope for, I guess. Yeah, you know, it's funny you mentioned those guys running the same cars. You go to these shows and you can see cars that are 10, 20, 30 years old still competing as if, uh, you know, competing against the brand new TQs. And that's something that's interesting about indoor racing, I would say. Yeah, um, I'm not exactly sure on the age of my car, but I know the sister car to mine is 1989. It was built. I believe my car's a little newer than that, but uh, for the most part, it's old technology. I mean, straight axle cars is what we're running. So, you know, I know Rudolph and some of the guys got uh, independent front suspension cars, and you know, obviously some guys are building new cars. But for the most part, nothing's really changed. I mean, you look at the modifieds now. The, the bodies have changed a little bit, but the cars, for the most part, haven't changed that much. So, um, it should be fun. I'm, I'm really excited for it. Well, Ryan, uh, we, we will let you do one more thing here. We always like to let whoever comes on thank their sponsors and so on and so forth. So we'll, we want to give you that opportunity. If you got a website where people can catch up with you, you know, whatever you got, take this opportunity and tell everybody about it at home. Well, first off, I got to thank my family, my mom, my dad, you know, my sister, everybody. They get up so much for me to be able to do this, and it's, uh, it's really a family sport for us. It's something that we do on the weekends together, and I got to thank them. Uh, this would not be possible without them. My whole crew, I'm not even going to name anyone in particular because we got so many good guys, but they all know who they are. You know, everybody who supported me. Um, my girlfriend, Melissa, I got to thank all my sponsors, Subway, Tim Phillips Garage, DMS Powder Coating, Shawnee Services, National Maintenance Contracting Corporation, I want to thank Bicknell Racing Products and uh, ERD Racing Engines. Yeah, like you said, we got uh, RyanCC.com if you can follow us on there. And then I have a Facebook page, too. So um, I appreciate you guys having me on. Hey, man, we appreciate you coming on. And uh, congrats again on the win this past Saturday. And uh, hopefully we'll catch up to you next time when uh, we head down to Black Rock there on November 3rd. Again, good luck at that race. All right, thanks, guys. Have good a good one. There. So, again, that was uh, Ryan Susie, winner of the National Open on uh, – Saturday down at the Black Rock Speedway, and they held off Alan Johnson, which uh, for any young driver, that's that's got to feel pretty good. And he, it wasn't even close. No, no, no. He, he smoked them, as you would say. He um, kicked their asses. All right, yeah, I've used it once, so now you can use <laughs> yeah. it. Why not? Well, you, you opened the door. <laughs> yeah, I know. I figured I, I opened the door for you to use it. So, yeah. but he did. So you know, hey, Rich, take your head off. Nobody can see you. They're complaining it's too dark. Well, tell you know what's funny. Last week he Last takes the hat off. Take He's taking crap they... for it. You know, I'll stick up for you. There you go. <laughs> <Is that better? laughs> know what I mean, Vern? That's what you look this like is, there. This is supposed to be a serious. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> this is supposed to be a serious talk show about camping, and camping and, and hunting and hunting. And hunting. Yeah. yeah, we haven't even chatted about that yet, have we? <laughs> no, not yet. We'll get there. <laughs> All right. So now that we've covered BlackRock, and uh, our next guest here in a little bit will be Justin Ayers. So it's uh, probably best if we uh, shift gears here. <laughs> <laughs> I got to say that once a week. And uh, talk a little bit about Eastern States, more so, l- more about the racing and uh, results and so on and so forth. Uh, I mentioned uh, the 358 feature Sonny, on uh, Sonny, Saturday night. Sonny wants our thoughts on the Wicked Sportsman Wreck, too, by the way. Sportsman Wreck. At Black Rock? Yeah. I, I didn't see it, so go ahead. Uh, go ahead. If you want to do that, Rich, go ahead. Yeah. Go then on, I'll, come, I'll come back. Since we have the question, I like when we get interactive questions. So You know, it was... Uh, God... It, it took probably 20 minutes to get two laps in. You're, in, you're in pulling the, your mic too far over, buddy. I know. It's, I hate it. Ain't, well, I don't like Bombas' setup. Well, I, I, I'm, gonna, I'm switching when I come back. Okay, that's fine. He's going over there? Um, yeah. 
this thing sucks. I don't know how Bombas does it, it sucks. <laughs> um, no, but it, it took probably 20 minutes to run two laps. Uh, you know, Ouch. they take the green, they go into one, they have a wreck, and that's the way it was. Well, it, they they take a restart, they run one full lap, they come out of turn two, and somebody gets that wall on the back stretch, Chris. You know right. which one? Oh I'm yeah, talking about. yeah, the one that jumps out at you all of a sudden. And it jumped out, out and it bit one, and then you can see it about two or three rows back, it bit another one, and they just started stacking them up. And uh, I I don't know who got into Lauren Lincoln. But Lauren had gotten turned around. It was facing the wrong way. And he cleared the entire right side of that car off Ooh. to the point. I mean, it, it bent the axle. It looked like a taco. That's, oh, a, I mean, that's it, a bad couple of days it, right there. Yeah, his right front was uh, – it, it was back beyond uh, the, the part of the cage where he's sitting inside. Oh. Um, fortunately, he was okay. Um, but but when, he hit, when it hit, it sounded like somebody set off a bomb. And you know, where were you actually, Where did you see that happen from? I was sitting right in the uh, the pit grandstand. You so right, it was, I was, it was pretty right much there. right in front yeah. of you. Um, and you got it, some great pictures with your phone, right? Uh, I got nothing because you could see nothing. But <laughs> when it was, <laughs> good question, when good it question. was all said and done, there is, we did uh, tweet a picture out that came from Jeff Sneeberger. Um, it turned six. Now, photos. did did we get did we get permission to do that? Uh, <laughs> did you put 30, did you put thirty first no, lap on it? Apparently, I'm just a thief, and I took it. And at least this guy was smart enough to put his photography name on it, well, like good. every other good photographer I have ever met in my life. And that's all I'm saying on that. Okay. Yeah. All right. So that's that's your thoughts. <laughs> I didn't. I I missed. Yeah. Didn't yeah. Do that, no. Okay. All right, so let's go with uh, Eastern States weekend full uh, results recap here. All right, I apologize. I'm leaning forward into the camera here, making me, yeah, uh, I feel like I'm going to fall out of the chair, but it's the easiest way to see in here because it's so dark. <laughs> I uh, know, but everybody's saying that, they're, that their computer just lightened up a ton when you lean forward. Oh, right yeah, because hold on, let me get the glare. <laughs> I'll wax it for you. All right, 358 race <laughs> on a Saturday night. It was the headliner on Saturday night. Uh, Brett Hearn won the 88-lap feature. Tim McCready was second. Stuart Friesen third. Pat Ward. Uh, and Billy Decker were the top five uh, in that event. So uh, Brett Hearn shockingly won that race for the 14th time, the small block portion. Then on uh, Sunday, we'll get you the big race results here. Then we'll talk about the sportsmen and the 305s and so on. Uh, and the modifieds, it was Brett Hearn uh, picking up the 200 lap win. And it was in dominant fashion. I mean, there was a bunch. That race, I got to say, the only thing that really irked me about that race is so many laps under caution. You know, dirt officials are trying to get guys in line. They won't listen. They won't do what they're told. And that's just, you know, it takes a race away from the fans. You know, and that, and that that's something that's irritating. Because you can hear, you know, I had a scanner. You can listen to the official saying, guys, get in line. And they just wouldn't do it. And, you know, you, you count cautions in that race. Nearly half the race was run under caution. And, and that shouldn't be the case. You know, yeah, it's, it's, no it's, it's too much. It's, you know, guys got to get, get things in order here. Uh, Brett Hearn won over Billy Decker, Tim McCready, Jimmy Phelps. And uh, Justin Ayers, uh, he was fifth. Sixth was Matt Shepard, Kenny Tremont, Tim Fuller, Jerry Higby, and Andy Bacchetti will round out the top ten in that race. And we'll talk more about that. i got some other things I want to bring up uh, about that race. Uh, looking at the sportsman, the open sportsman feature was won by Brian Crummel over Anthony Perego, Tyler Dipple, Matt Janiak, and Scott Flammer. Scott Flammer actually ran all three, ran three features. He ran the two wow. sportsman races and the 305 sprint car feature. Uh, and the great sportsman action. All in his own cars? Yeah, Brian. Yeah, yeah. Uh, wow. Brian Cummel, uh, Tyler Dipple, Gary Edwards Jr., Jimmy Spellman, and John Ferrier uh, there in the Cray Sportsman in the Pro Stocks. It was Rob Yetman picking up the victory over Robbie Speed, Mike Dudka, Don Carlson, and Fonda Speed regular Ivan Joslin. The Street Stock race went to Kevin Skelly over Charlie Hotelling, Emerson Cargain Sr., uh, Charlie Donald, and George Deckelman. That was the top five there, and. Uh, and again, the 305 win went to uh, Justin Barger uh, as he uh, he got the victory. Uh, finishing in second again was Gary the newly Palmer. found 305 ringer, as it were. Yeah, the 305 <laughs> ringer. Yeah, definitely. He had a, a heck of a race car. I mean, he, you know, like everything else, he smoked him. Uh, you know, Palmer was second. Scott Flammer finished third. And there's his name again. Uh, Mike Esposito and Scott Goodrich were the top five in uh, the 305 Sprint Car A main event. So uh, there's a quick rundown recap of it and uh, a good look at Eastern States. Um, and I believe joining us on the phone now, uh, coming to us 
uh, here on the 31st lap, the, the fifth place finisher in uh, Saturday's 200 lap race. Uh, Justin Ayers, Justin, uh, welcome to the 31st lap. Thanks for having me. So, how pleased were you with your efforts uh, on Saturday or Sunday afternoon coming home with the top five? Yeah, I was I was real happy. Um, you know, I think we could have been third or fourth, you know, very easily, but uh, circumstances on some restarts and stuff like that, we kind of got shuffled back on a few of them. And um, but you know, for for a track where um, you know we've never really ran the best at, um, we've always been maybe a top ten car there, but to be Pretty much, uh, you know, all week being in the top, you know, eight, you know, fastest all week and winning the heat and stuff. Uh, it was definitely a good feeling and uh, come out of there with top five and, and keep, uh, you know, keep us up there in the points. You know, you've had a pretty good couple of weeks. You know, you had a good car out of Super Dirt Week as well. Uh, did you ride that confidence, that momentum into Eastern States? You know, really, um, our confidence really started uh, – you know, pretty much the last week there at Canandaigua, you know, we had some runs going, and, um, you know, we've run second that night, and then, and then you know, the next following day, we went right to the, right to rolling wheels, and, and, you know, led that race for, for 50 laps there, and broke a brake line, and, uh, you know, we, you know, circumstances and lap traffic there kind of, you know, got us shuffled back, but I ran third the whole race until that last restart there with the one lap to go, and got shuffled back to six there, um, and then from there, you know, we went into, you know, Mohawk and had a top three. Um, you know, then went into the, the Victoria when had a great car there. Um, you know, running top five there, you know, in the first hundred laps and kind of got got the jingle with Shepard and, uh, and her and got me spun around. And, you know, I think, uh, you know, the last five or six races that we've run, we, we should have all been in the top five. Um, you know, so, you know, we've definitely stepped up the program here the last, uh, you know, month and a half or so. What what is it? Do you, do you guys know what it is? Is it is it a matter of, you know, the cars are getting better and 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 you're gaining confidence, or is there just or is there just some multiple things that are coming together for you? Well, I think a lot of it is uh, you know circumstances of uh, you know making sure you time good, um, you know carrying momentum and you know getting a good uh, you know having a good heat race finish, and then just making the right decisions for the future. You know, I've been doing this for long. I'm not as long as a lot of these guys have, but. Um, you know, it's all in you know making sure you make the right decisions and what changes to make and when to make them. And um, we just seem to have been like I said, just clicking on a few things here with the car that you know seem to maybe making it work a little bit better. And um, you know, just you know, when when you start running good, the team you know likes to work harder and, and keep getting better, and, and that makes you run better too. Taking it back now to Sunday afternoon, uh, was that race a grind for everybody in it? You know, it seemed like. Early on, everything went great. You know, the first 30 laps ran under green, and then after that, it was like almost like all hell broke loose in the sense that every couple laps there was a caution and everybody was fighting to get that bottom groove. Yeah, and that's typical Eastern states. Um, <laughs> you know, there are usually a lot of yellows because it typically gets pretty much one lane, and, uh, and that's exactly what happens. You know, you start fighting for a position, and somebody gets somebody turned around, and you know, I was right in the middle of that thing when... Uh, with Jimmy Phelps when he kind of got in the back of Bellinger there, and I was right there. I mean, I, I don't even know how I got through it. And uh, he would come out of there without a, without a scratch on the car. And like I said, you know, we were running, you know, we started eighth. I think we were running like, you know, sixth or seventh at that time going into the, that pit stop, and we came out of pits like, four, you know, third or fourth, you know, and was actually, uh, you know, up to third at that point with people that hadn't pitted yet. So we were in a really good position, you know, and, uh, but that's just you know typical Eastern States weekend. I mean, you if you come out of there with a straight car, you're you're pretty happy. And uh, <laughs> you know, last year we we come out of there with all all four corners were all dinged up, you know, because just uh, you just you know, like I said, you just fight for position the whole race, and it seems like you ride around under caution for fifty laps of the two hundred. Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot on Saturday or Sunday. I know that it was a lot. It was a uh, like I said, it was almost half the race. Uh, you know, after I went back and did the math and, and looked at it. Um, you know, you mentioned that wreck there. How close were you to being into that, and uh, how important was it for you to get through that to be able to finish where you did? I mean, it was real important because, uh, you know, I was, I don't, like I said, I still don't know how I got through it. I was actually <laughs> right in Jimmy Phelps' with left retire when he got kind of jingled around there, and um, I finished turning him, you know, the whole way. And uh, like I said, I was just able to get through it. And, um, you know, like I said, it's important. You know, we're in a, pretty tight points race with uh, Danny Johnson and Billy Dunn. You know, all three of us are fighting for fourth and points. And, uh, 
you know, every race counts. I mean, you got to try to finish ahead of these guys every race. And, um, you know, these are 150 point races. So, you know, one BNF could, you know, you might be done, you know, might take yourself right out of the points chase. You know, late in that race, what did you think when you saw Danny Johnson uh, have to go up on the hook there or, or, or bring out the caution there with the, with the tire going down? Well, like I said, I was right behind him. Um, like I said, one of those restarts, he was, you know, not the bottom, and I was on the top, and he ended up getting by me. But, um, you know, I pretty much seen why he got the flat. Uh, him and Hetzler got together. You know, he got up on his Hetzler and rubbed him pretty good, and it wasn't a lap later he had a flat tire. So um, I don't think it was a circumstance of him wearing it out because he actually, I believe he changed the tire on the pit stop. Um, but when he's on a mission, man, he, he's definitely on a mission. And uh, <laughs> once he, he flipped that car, they, they said he came over the radio and he says, we're going to win this thing. And uh, The flip and go. Yep. Yep. <laughs> you know, when, he's, when he's on a mission, he, he's definitely tough to beat. And um, like I said, he, uh, uh, he definitely made an impressive showing there. Yeah, you know, and again, we're chatting here with Justin Arizona, 31st lap, uh, fifth place finish down at the Orange County Fair Speedway as part of Eastern States. Uh, yeah, tire wear, did you guys expect more tire wear than there was? Because uh, I know you look at the top three guys, and I mean, the tires were worn, but it's nothing like you expect at Eastern States. You know, my tire was, you know, it was worn pretty good. I mean, I probably could have gone another 20, maybe 25 laps, maybe at the most. Um, but you also, you know, when you play in that, like, you know, we had, we had a game plan. Our game plan was not to take a tire unless the tire wear was absolutely ridiculously bad. And um, you know, we conserved our tire during a couple of those, you know, longer green flag runs, 30 lap runs. You just try to keep your car straight and, and not wear out your right rear. And because uh, we knew when it was coming down to it, I mean, I think it was about 20 years old, I seen the first guy get a flat. And I'm like, oh, boy. <laughs> but, you know, if your car is handling good and, you know, you usually will not wear that tire out. Um, and uh, we seem to have a pretty decent handle on the race car and, and kept a tire underneath us, and we were able to finish all 200 laps on the same same set. All right, well, now let's look ahead a little bit here. You know, you talked about the point battle and so on and so forth. So by that, uh, you ready for to head down to the World Finals? Yeah, yeah, we're uh, we're getting ready. We're actually at the shop right now. Um, just said, uh, just, you know, getting everything ready for that race. You know, it's a big race for us. It's, you know, live on TV and it's us uh, to you know have our sponsors on TV and, and show them uh, you know show them what we can do. So it's definitely a big race for us, and it's just the atmosphere of the whole place is just unreal. You know, there's so many fans down there. Like you know, if you're listening and you never been to it, I mean, I would definitely suggest to go. It's there's so much racing going on, and and like I said, it's just electrifying people that are there. It's like you know you never realize how many people are there, and and. Uh, you know, look up in the stands and be like, "Oh my God, man! There's a lot of people here." <laughs> but um, it's great. You know, it's 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 a long way to go. It's and it costs a lot of money to go down there. Um, you know, you're down there for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, uh, hotel rooms and gas to get down there. But uh, you know, if you're going to do this, uh, you know, and follow the series and, and be competitive, it's definitely an race you, gotta, you have to go to. How important is it for you guys to go down there? You know, you mentioned the TV exposure and all that. Do you play that card when you talk to your sponsors and things like that and saying, hey, we're going to go to the World Finals, it's going to be on TV? Yeah, definitely. That's uh, one of the first things you tell them. And, you know, I got, had a sponsor call me today and kind of he was, you know, asking me you know, what time it's going to be on and and what channel and all this stuff. So, you know, they look forward to it. You know what I mean? It's it's a lot of it's an impressive for them when they can say, hey, you know, you know it's a car to help out right there. You know, they might be with friends or, you know, out at a bar watching the race or something and, they can tell people that they know, you know, that's a car I help out or this is, you know, a car I own. And um, like I said, it's definitely a car you play in your own hands. And, uh, you know, unfortunately, you know, back, you know, 10, 12 years ago, we had more exposure than any other racing besides NASCAR, you know, had on TV where we could, we had, uh, you know, the Sunday live races at Weedsport and we had, uh, you know, this week on dirt and, uh, you know, all sorts of stuff like that going on. And, uh, you know, we kind of walked, dropped that ball and, and lost all that stuff. So, and as you, as you could see, all those sponsors that were here that were big time have all left also since we don't have that. So it is harder to get sponsors if you can't throw that card out there that, you, you know, that you're live on TV, you know, five or six times a year, but you're still live on TV, you know, once a year. It definitely helps out. I believe Speed Channel is going to be airing the – the stuff from Super Dirt Week Saturday. Yeah, 
that Saturday. That, that, that's, that's, you know. Yeah, and then then the following week is going to be the the World Finals. So, nice. You know, it, it is nice to see that. But but Justin's got a great point with that uh, Empire Sports Network program that was on board with the. Uh, the races over there at Weedsport, since those have gone, it's a good point about the sponsors. A lot of those guys have, a lot of those programs have, have disappeared or left. Yeah, I mean, I mean if you look at it, Kenny Charles is on, and they were uh, a big supporter of that Sunday night deal, and they're no longer available. You had, uh, you know, you had Pillsbury on board, Mitsubishi, all those guys that were big corporate sponsors. Um, they definitely, uh, you know, enjoyed, you know, having their names on cars. And it's just tough anymore to get, to get people to jump on board and help people out. Well, Justin, uh, we don't want to take up too much of your time. I know you got things to, you know, you said you're at the shop getting things ready to go. Uh, but we do want to give you a chance, as we always do here on the 31st lap, to, you know, talk about those sponsors and thank them. You know, we do appreciate you taking the time out of your night uh, to chat with us here for a few minutes. Yeah, you know, first and foremost, uh, you know, Phelps and my products, uh, you know, my primary sponsor, and, uh, you know, they uh, definitely help me out a lot. Um, and then also uh, Sweeteners Plus, definitely a huge supporter of my racing team. Um, RL Brain Painting. Uh, SMV Motorsports, um, Classics and Customs, uh, Chuck Graham, you know, great supporter of my race team also. And, uh, you know, all the people that, you know, people don't realize, all those product sponsors, um, you know, FK Rod Ends, Integra Shacks, uh, Doug Holmes at Finger Lakes Machine, um, all those guys really helped me out a lot. And, uh, you know, if it wasn't for them, I wouldn't be able to get through. And then also my crew, um, you know, those guys are, you know, busting butt all the time. And, you know, we got Jody. Uh, my cousin Anthony, Rusty, um, Joe Cook, you know, there's numerous guys, uh, you know, Beaver, you know, we got nicknames for all these guys, but uh, those guys all, uh, you know, put in a lot of effort and, uh, you know, take time away from their, you know, lives to, to help me out, so that means a lot. And then also, uh, you know, my wife and daughter, definitely, uh, you know, I'm gone a lot of times and my wife's take care of my daughter and I've uh, got to thank them also. Do you have a website? Do you have a place where people can find you on Facebook or Twitter or something like that if they want to follow along? No, I don't. Uh, I got a website, uh, justinharris.com. Um, but uh, no Facebook, no Twitter stuff. But uh, <laughs> we're going to get a fan page going here pretty quick. I got a lot of people have been asking me if they can run my fan page for me. So we're going to eventually get into that. So. Well, Justin, uh, we appreciate you coming on, man. And uh, best of luck to you here as you go forward. And uh, good luck when you get down to Charlotte. Thanks again for coming on. I appreciate you, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah. So, again, uh, Justin Ayers, uh, fifth place finished out at the Orange County Fair Speedway as part of uh, Eastern States. You know, he mentioned that wreck. You know, Danny Johnson coming out of that wreck, you know, the roof's all crumpled down, and, and he just— It was they, pretty dramatic. Yeah, he flips it over, <laughs> hammers the gas, smoke comes flying out of the car because he was upside down, and then he goes. And you're watching him race that race. And you know, he was right what he said on the radio. He did. He goes, we're going to win this race. I, I had a scanner on, and he's like, we're going to win this race. And he was coming. He was. Well, he's no stranger to that he track. Was, he's, won, he's, won that, he's yeah. won that race plenty of times. Yeah, I mean, and he was, I believe he was last year's winner, actually. He was the defending champion, if I recall correctly. Which Probably. I believe, which I yeah. believe I am right. It would, yeah. But don't quote me. No, no, with Mike Payne. He yeah. won it in the 66, though, before, too. Yep. The 66 car won that race multiple times with different drivers. Danny Johnson. Uh, Jerry Higby and Jeff Hetzler all won it with this, the Atlas Paving Car, and Bobby Varon drove it this week and had a motor issue uh, while I running inside that. the top ten. But uh, but yeah, you watch him flip, you watch him get upside down, and he flips it. You know, they get the car flipped over. He hammers it. Smoke comes out of it. He stops for a second, like he was tightening the belts, and said, "All right, let's go. Showtime." And I mean, he drove his butt off. I mean, he <laughs> came up through the field. It was it was fun to watch, and even if you're not a Danny Johnson fan. To see a guy flip the car over and then come back and just run into the top five, you're like, just this is be- awesome. Like, it, yeah. come on. Come on. You know, How can you not pull for him? Yeah, you got to. It's awesome. <laughs> you know, you want to see that. You know, guys, you know, driving like that. So that was pretty neat. Uh, that wreck was, that wreck could have been bad for a lot of guys. Jimmy Phelps was in it. Uh, it was him and Hearn. They were all battling for position. I, I don't know whose fault it was because I couldn't see any of it. Uh, I just know everybody has a different perspective on it. As you know, it's racing. So everybody's going to have a different perspective. But, uh, uh, Bellinger got checked up, and then Jimmy got into him, and then Jimmy got sent, and then that was that was that, and you know it ended up being eight or ten cars all piling in there. Jerry Higby's guys did a hell of a job. Higby uh, broke the front end; he had the front end, uh, you know, tie rods and uh, and things of that nature all bent up and everything, and uh, he went to work, and the crew actually got it fixed under the red flag. 
So he was able to get back out in the race, and he scored a top 10 too. So uh, it was good for him uh, to come back out. And he, and he thanked the Vinny Salerno's guys, and he thanked Andy Bacchetti's crew guys because they all helped him get that car together. And it was almost reminiscent of what we talk about here with our sprint car guys, you know, with the SS helping each other out because those guys were willing to uh, go the extra mile and, and work together and uh, help each other out. So, uh, but, yeah, so that was good. That was neat, you know, you know again, that he mentioned that. And, uh, and he did sneak through there because he was right in that whole pack of cars. It was right where all the guys that had just pitted were. And that's where the accident started. You know, Hearn was right there. You know, Jimmy Phelps, you know, Hetzler was there. I mean, they were all right there in the middle of it. A couple points that were brought up, stuff that we're going to get to here after we chat with Jessica Power. Um, the tire situation at mm-hmm. Port Royal, we're going to get into that coming oh, up here in a few them. minutes. Williams and, Grove. And Williams Grove. Yep. We got to get into the New Egypt stuff coming up on the backside of this stuff. So all that is coming up for everybody that's asking about it on the live chat. We, uh, we are getting there. I want to welcome Jessica Power to the show, making a return visit. Jessica, welcome. Very much. Well, tell us a little bit about the season. I mean, you had the had a had a chance to go tour the mile. You finished top fifteen with a sportsman car out there. Uh, you going to straighten the panels out and and clean that thing up and take it to the National Parts Peddler Show with uh, Craig Avell and Finish Line Web Design. Tell us a little bit about what the what Syracuse and Super Dirt Week was like and and what the next plans are. Yeah. Of course, we went to Super Dirt Week last year, but we only made it to Weeds. It was our first year to go to the mile, and it was an awesome experience. Uh, only one of our crew guys had been there before, so it was new for all of us. And it's a lot of work, but it's, it really is worth it. Um, it was a great, great experience, and we can't wait to go back. What about uh, what about some of your plans for the postseason? You gonna you gonna make any starts anyplace else? We still got a few races left on the schedule, or is is um, Rockville pretty much the end of what you had planned for the twenty twelve year? The end of the season. Uh, it was really unfortunate that it rained out. We would have uh, liked to have run one more time. <laughs> uh, I'm, I said to the other day, I really wish we were racing somewhere, and I wish it was April already. <laughs> Normally by this time we're we're ready for a break, but I was uh, I, we had a really good season and I'm just excited to continue on. But we are done for the year until uh, next April. Now what happens when something comes up? Maybe you get an offer to go around a TQ somewhere. You're gonna take them up on it. <laughs> <laughs> I'd take anything <laughs> and anywhere, anytime. Well, tell Craig to get to work and see what he can drum up for you. <laughs> All right, I will. <laughs> Overall, you know how, how was this season? You got the win uh, back in June. And, you know, how, how big was that? And, and talk about, you know, the season as a whole. When we talked uh, back, I think it was in February, you talked about, you know, some of the goals that you had set out and, and what you wanted to accomplish. Did, did you meet that stuff and, and what did you learn along the way? Yeah, we, uh, we had a really great season. Our biggest goal this season was to be consistent and try and be inside the top ten every night. We really did accomplish that. I think we had upwards of 50 starts. We were in the top ten. I don't know, I, I somewhere around 30 or 35 times. Um, we struggled a little bit on the tour, which was a lot of our outside the top 10 results. <laughs> uh, our home track season was great. We in the points of Rockville, and I think fourth or fifth in uh, Mohawk. We finished third in the, third or fourth in the Sway Sportsman Series, and fifth Frenchie Sports Series. Well, we had a really good year. We were really happy with how we did. We're having some some brutal connection problems there. No, oh. it's uh the the phone's breaking up. Is it is it is it that phone there? It's it's not that line. Good, I guess. Maybe we got the <laughs> phone lines fixed on at least on on our end. The other two were good. Um, thankfully we we can pick up most of what what Jessica's saying. Um, I just wondered, you know, first how did how did the whole program where you're going to come out to the National Parts Peddler Show and and have the car on display in Craig's booth, other than he runs the website. You know, we we talked about it with him early in the season, earlier in the season, and we always go to the parts peddler to look around, and I, it's a great opportunity for us to be there and to showcase our car and to help promote Craig and his business. Finish Line Web Design is amazing. He's done a great job with our website this year. Um, we're happy to work with him, and we're really excited to be there and hopefully meet people. As a driver... 
what does that show me? I mean, can can you make the connections that you need to? How important are some of these postseason trade shows and preseason trade shows that we see in February and March? Can you make connections and actually cut some deals and 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 build something, or is it more just kind of going around and looking at product and and figuring out what you need to do for the coming year and helping you finalize your plans for the coming season? I think it's um, making connections and seeing what's coming up this season. Um, it's so valuable to be able to sit down and talk to people outside of the racetrack. I mean, racing is what we're all here for, but to be able to make a connection when you're not busy working on your car or getting ready for the next uh, next event, it's nice to be able to sit down and talk to people and hopefully make those connections and, and build relationships down the road. Uh, but it's also great to be able to see some of the new products that come from the company, um, look at what's on the slate for next year and try and get a head start. What is the plan for next year? Are you going to stick with this or are you going to move up? Yeah, we're going to stick with the sportsman car. <laughs> yeah. You don't want to go up to the modified yet? I'd love to. You're not going to go to a, you're not going to go to a 360 sprint car like Mike's open? <laughs> <laughs> no sprint cars right now. I would love to move up sometime, but uh, the money's not there and I really think I need more experience to take that I could make is moving up before I'm well that's probably probably one of the more mature uh, looks at it usually people just race right up the ladder as soon as they can taking the time uh, chatting with Jessica Power she's planning on taking the time and, and making sure she's comfortable with a sportsman car before she jumps up into the modified divisions fighting a little bit with some connection issues uh, as we as we chat with Jessica Power here making her second appearance on the 31st lap episode number 50, Mike, if you can believe that. 50 it's, episodes it's already. It's impressive. It's impressive. Jessica, you're part of history. This is the 50th episode. Can you believe it? Very good. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> we have as and, many. And, and have, I, be, I bet you, Jessica, you've listened to all 50 episodes, right? <laughs> course. <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't a very enthusiastic answer. I'll tell you what. No. <laughs> Well, we're 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 talking about maybe doing a live show from the National Parts Peddler. Any chance you'd be able to come and hang out? And maybe we can set up camp right in front of your car. Absolutely, that'd be great. She's okay with it, Mike. So All right, we're so, good. So we like got you're it. asking. We're yeah. good. We're Mike in. Was, Mike was Mike was asking me before we went on tonight if if he if you thought that if I thought that you would let us set up in front of the car. I didn't think it'd be a problem. He was nervous about it. Yeah. yeah. Oh no, not at all. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta love the love on this show, you know. <laughs> but. uh you know, Jessica, we don't want to keep you too long here. We know we'll see you down at the Parts Brothers show, and I'm sure, you know, if you're there, we're going to have you on the show, you know, and be a live guest Craig's, with us. Craig's going to have all of his all of his drivers that are there on site all of them? lined up. He's going so, to have them. It's going to be a rotating wow. seat for. It's going to be all 37 finish line web design drivers. They're going to caravan through. 37. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you know, Jessica, you mentioned Craig and and all he does for you. Uh, as we did last time, as we always do, as we wrap things up here, we want to give you a chance. Thank your sponsors. Uh, tell folks about your website and uh, take care of you know those things. You know to take care of those who support you. Thank you. Um, first and foremost, of course, I want to thank my mom and dad and my family. Um, my sister was in fact it would not be possible. But of course, also my sponsors: Silver Bus Line, Jack, John, the Auto Service, uh, Big Nels, Maris State on Board, Bob Hilbert. Uh, Bert, Fastenal, Napa, and Dev. Um, we unfortunately lost a very dear friend of ours who is also a sponsor of the school. We just want to send our condolences and um, our thoughts to the school and Aiken family. A wonderful man, and yeah, I saw that on the on the web page talking about the the fallen friend there and and certainly somebody that's going to be missed and and the thirty first lap sends her along their best to the family and we'll keep them in our thoughts. Um, Jessica, I hate to hate to let you go or cut you off. We're we're battling some of those connection problems and we're only getting about every fourth word of what you're saying. Um, what we'll do is we'll we'll let it go now. We plan for sure on catching up with you again uh, at National Parts Peddler and if uh, if we don't catch up with you before. Awesome. Thanks a lot for having me on. Thanks, Jess. We'll catch up with you again soon. Thanks. Have a good one. Thanks. Bye. Well, that's a, that's a tough break there. 
don't know Apparently, what the deal was. I, I think the I think the connection got held up at the border. I'm gonna blame it on Canada. <laughs> well, what, what, am what, I what doing? are you doing? I am, there's I am. a bullseye on Rich. <laughs> what the hell? I got enough. Uh, hey, uh, oh, I thought man, we, we have. A, there's our hunting <laughs> reference for the night. <laughs> there you go. Bullseye, uh, big target. Man, I'm thinking no so kidding. much about how we're gonna how we're gonna get straighten that phone thing out. I wasn't paying attention which overlay, and then yeah, I panicked, nice tried job. to fix it, and, and screwed it went up the wrong way. Listen, I don't need right. help getting and a target <laughs> on my head. Okay. Yeah, yeah, we all got our own targets, right? Yeah, there's somebody that wants to take us out. At least one. Somebody. Yeah, maybe maybe yeah. five, ten, probably fifteen in my case. Well, yeah, you're in front I, of the I, microphone all the time. Yeah, so you're I'm always either, wrong. Yeah, I'm either loved or extremely hated, which is <laughs> usually <laughs> extremely hated. Depends so. on what week. Yeah, no, it, it's it's a season long thing. It's not a weekly thing. I'm I'm usually extremely hated, and it happens. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> the good news is uh, Mike's okay with that, and you know what? You know, I, I got to be doing my job if I'm hated. So <laughs> I, I just don't care. It's the way I look at it at work too, at school. You know, like oh, you guys hate me. Good. That means I'm awesome. actually doing my job. <laughs> You're learning something. I'm not here to be your friend. You are you know? smarter today. Yeah, exactly. Well, I don't know in my case, but uh, you know, <laughs> <laughs> well, as long as they're getting smarter, yeah. you're doing your job, and that's okay. Yeah. So, uh, which way we want to go here? We want to go tires in Pennsylvania. Why we want to go to uh, New Egypt Speedway. Um, you know, and then of course we'll wrap everything up here today. We can talk a little bit about NASCAR, a little bit, and then uh, we talk to? about Hagerstown preview. Talk about what's going on down there and uh, this coming weekend. And of course, well, first of all, I mean, that's, know, five mile point. You know, the championship there for those, you know, ROC. So we got we got somebody that's on on the live chat that's been posting up links to racetracks like crazy, and I I can't do anything with those links because if I start clicking on links, it's going to start shutting everything else off. Right. So I don't, so I'm not really uh I don't want him to be upset that we're not going and following these links that 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 they're putting up. Um, but we're not type following. in there yeah. type type in there what you want me to want me to bring up and we'd be happy to work on it. Yeah, but, we can uh, do that. So a whole lot. so let's go. Tires. Uh, I mean, you want to go is, tires for yeah, this is huge uh, now because this uh, is crazy. The the news that was announced Port Royal Speedway and Williams Grove Speedway announced today on their Twitter or last night on their Twitter as well that they are now going Hoosier Tire for 2013 on the weekly competition. Now, as you know, we've said on this show we've talked about currently nothing has come out, but the original deal was for American Racer to be the tire of the World of Outlaws and the All Star Circuit of Champions. I don't know what's going to happen now. The way this is all shaken out, because the weekly tracks, Knoxville Raceway did it a few weeks back, and now Port Royal, Williams mm-hmm. Grove. I mean, that's three and big Fremont, time. Fremont Attica. Okay, Ohio tracks, big time sprint car. Those tracks. are big time sprint car tracks, and now they're going to Hoosiers. What's going to happen? <sighs> I mean, Do but you it, think they're taking a, a pretty big risk of I I don't know making that choice before I mean I mean you're talking World of Outlaw you know you're talking about I, some traveling touring series right coming through and, and, and the problem is only, are those guys going to have to buy tires when they come to PA now I mean that, right. that and that's a hard thing because if you look if they're not on the same tire how many cars are you going to get for these shows now that's going to drastically reduce the car counts at these big events you know you have the All Stars you have the World of Outlaws you get forty to fifty cars. At Williams Grove, you get f- close to forty cars at yeah, Port Royal. It, I mean, and that now, whole Pennsylvania Posse versus right, the World of Outlaws thing is out could, the window. Yeah, and and then Partially. the other thing is, if you bring in the Outlaws, your guys are in an extreme, extreme disadvantage because they got to run a tire they don't run all year. No, the the question is, are we are we going to even see racing at that track by by those sanctions? I don't know. I mean, we've had in the past where they were there were no sanctioned shows. You know, when there was the split, if you will, in the Outlaws and the National Sprint Tour. There were issues where the tracks were not oh, running. I either. forgot about that. Yeah, yeah. yeah there right. was there was a deal where the <laughs> so tracks. Else. Yeah, the tracks were not running any of those clubs. They're like, no, we're not going to run any of you. So, I don't know what's going to happen. I mean, it it sucks. I mean, yeah. personally, from my perspective, it sucks. If in fact those two major groups go with American Racer, because now you got to wonder what are they thinking. And, I, and I'm wondering. If how can, what how can dirt have how can dirt have a deal with Hoosier on their modified division and if they maintain it, who knows what will happen? I, I personally, but I think they're two separate entities. I, I don't think it matters, does it? You don't think it's going to? Uh, I, I, mean, I, could, I, could I think get, it would be you know, awesome. Could you get if, a more lucrative deal if you put American Racer on all your major brands? See, like, I would think so. I mean, personally, that's my perspective. I don't think you can do that. What are the late models? They only have to run Hoosiers at their what is it? The UMP sanctioned shows, right? I think, I think anything so. else is open time. Yep. That would be interesting because I would love to see Dirt Car on and, uh, American well, Racers in, in Central New York. How awesome would that be? Because that right there, as we all know, is the biggest factor 
keeping guys from going to races. I mean, you have that right, side right of line on 81. East of yep. 81 is almost all American racer. West of 81, the Interstate 81 is almost Hoosier. all Hoosier, and it's the great divide, so to speak. You put everybody on the same tire, oh, I, I'd be excited about it. Well, the, you know, now you've just opened, if a guy's not, not running well in the last half of the season in points at his home track, the likelihood of him saying, you know what, I think I'm going to take off and I'm going to run two new tracks this weekend right. and see what happens. You know, yeah, you may lose a car over here, but, you know, this guy's now branching out and you're going to see another car someplace else. Yep. And, and that can go, you know, it can go both ways where they can just go and do what they want. Yeah. Which, which is what I like to see personally. Yeah, I like you it know, too. I mean, we all want to see more guys go to different tracks and more racing. That's the bottom line. I like to go to racing. You know, we've had the debate here, quality versus quantity. I'm a quantity guy. I want to see 80 cars in the pits. And, and you know what? Every Saturday night, if you look at the, the Super Dirt Car Series points, the big block points right now, Brad Hearn's the only guy in the top 16 that is not a Canadago Motorsports Park regular. Right. I see the quality every week. I right. Mean, that's, there's 15 well, yeah, quality I mean, hey, drivers. That's what you get. That's that's your home track points. I mean, that's... Right. And that's, in, in, and you know, there's yeah, all there's, from one track. Yeah, and yeah. there's times, uh, <laughs> but you have to. I mean, where else you, you don't have run. a choice? Yeah, yeah. The, the times that that racing is fantastic oh, because yeah. you've got quality drivers. I enjoy hey, Rich, what happens when Canadegua goes with an independent tire deal. <laughs> then, then where? Do <laughs> I don't think that's going to happen. You know, I don't. I mean, from the way Jeremy sounded last week, I mean, nothing's official, of course. You know, I, don't, I don't think he's made a decision yet. But I don't just, think he has either. And, ju- and, but just listening to him. I mean, everything's in play. As all, you all know, money talks. We all know that. It's racing. Well, and what I, the one thing I've learned about Jeremy is you could think his mind's made up. If something comes up, information comes back to him that benefits him changing his right. mind, well, why would he's going to change his mind. Right. Why would he's going to go back to whatever. So, again, so, you know, and listening to the interview last week, I mean, it sounds like he's moving in one direction, but he never officially said, you know, which way he's going. So we can't say right. one way or the other. We, That's we don't know doing. yet. I mean, honestly, though, it would make – It'd be make a lot of us happy if it was American Racer for everybody, and then well, you know, was, a, you know, what I think what that would do also is bring some of these tracks that are out back into the dirt, car, the dirt fold. car fold. I think personally, like maybe Brewerton and Fulton. And Fulton. I mean, and, and now you can boom, look at the windows; you can open up. Now the question remains, though, we know what? the Hoosier deal always goes through dirt car, right? That's where all the money flows through. With the tracks right now, it's all independent tracks Going. making independent deals. And I think that's how Hoosier got back into... I mean, if, if you put two and two together, Hoosier said, all right, we're not going to get the big deal, so then we're going to buy the tracks. Which, from a business standpoint, is... Makes sense, only, right? They're going to make money. Makes perfect sense. Now, right. You know, it, and that's tough because now you're looking at, at this track. Yeah, and this, so they're all running this tire, and right. and we we want to run this other track on Saturday, and, and we got to get a different tire. Right. Well, this so, is, you guys... You guys remember the deal when the World of Outlaws late models first came back and they had truly open tires, truly open tires. Yeah, Ronald Chabron. And and you would look in the back of these trailers and there was fifty different compounds from three that's different still, you know what though that's still late model racing. Well, yep. yeah, it still uh, is. And I like that. It and and it and it yeah, puts it back in the, the hands of the drivers. Is there any middle ground? Is there any concession that a track and a touring operation could make to where the track could have an, an independent tire clause? I don't and think it's going to happen. It, I mean, we we saw it last year with Kingsley <laughs> over at Weedsport, honestly, right? I mean, that's he wanted to do it with, his, with the sportsman, run open tires, and no, that wasn't the agreement, and no. And I don't think they can. Honestly, I don't think Dirt Car can do that. I mean, because how are they being fair to their tire dealer if they're allowing that? You know, we signed a tire deal with Hoosier by— We it, have to run Hoosier. Right. It wouldn't be fair to them. Like, we said you're going to run on our big block series. We'll be Hoosier. How can we how can we ditch you and say well tracks can do whatever they want but only our series will be big block Hoosiers but it's different you know in that in the sense that the other national touring series you can run whatever you want I, I don't know I, it's just, you know what what would happen if Dirt Car signed on with uh, two different tire see, I'd like companies to see that. and said compete for you we're we're gonna make American racers and Hoosiers available to all I know the drivers. there has been there has been testing done to have a Hoosier tire that is similar to the American Racer tire. I know that for a fact. That that testing has been done. And that that tire has been on a race car at some point this year. At Rolling Wheels? No. Oh. No. In a, in a race. At Weedsport? Nope. Oh. I'm not going to I'm not gonna go out <laughs> I know there you anymore. Won't, <laughs> it's fun you to know? try. <laughs> yeah. It is fun to just throw um, them out there. <laughs> but I know, and, I, and, and from my understanding, it's Because you can always tell it's, if, it's if you similar. hit on something, Mike will give you a pause and look at you and be like, 
No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> but I know it's competitive, and it's, it, it, if they go to that, it's like basically a black tread pattern. You know, it's not a late model tire. It's a modified black tread pattern, right. which is what an American racer is. Okay, it's a modified tire, but it's still black tread. You know, and that's what the late model guys run. And the Hoosier tires that our modifieds currently run are not that black tread. They're different. So if you get yeah, a block more of a sawtooth right, and scissor pattern. Yeah, so if, if, if Hoosier came out with that block tread and said, all right, let's go, and went head-to-head, head, I think it, you could run either one and, and, and be comparable. But, again, then you're playing the two entities against each other, and how, how well is that going to go? I'd be fine with that, uh, and we're it, all fine with it, but how are they going to deal with it is the question. Right. Well, you know, I guess I'm um, – Well, on the local level, one of the biggest things is – and this is something that our buddy North that's been tuning in here brought up is – the more tires a track sells when you have a tire deal, the more money for the track. See, now you mentioned that, but then we've talked about Utica on this show. And, that Utica, and Utica had a different. Utica, Utica has a totally different deal on that. None of the tire money goes into the overall point fund. The tire money at Utica Rome actually goes back to the driver. Let's say you buy 100 tires, and the cost of those tires is $160, but the actual cost of the tires is $100. Like they have to sell them for the going rate, whatever the going rate is. So at the end of the year, if you bought those 100 tires and you had, you know, you bought. There's sixty dollars over the actual price. You'll get six hundred times a, a hundred bucks, so six grand, whatever it would be. You get that money back at the banquet. So I mean that I don't see a lot of tracks doing that. I can tell you that right yeah. now. No, because that, that, that's a that's, that's, a, that's a big bottom line. Cut. That, that's a you know, and that's why you know you can have I flip to respect. this for a second. Yeah, go ahead. Okay, so you got the more tires you buy at a track, the more money you stand to make at the end of the year. Right. Would you rather see? A tire compound that's more durable, so you don't have to buy as many tires. So, it well, I mean, to me, it, it, I don't, I, I don't care what to do. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, mean, I, hate, the tire, I hate, I hate being that guy. You know, I don't race. I'm fortunate that I get to announce it, and I'm happy. But I don't, I don't know what guys would prefer. I don't want to even speculate on that. I mean, that's that's up to them. You know, some, I'd rather some not bigger have to, I'd rather not have to spend the money up front. If you're looking for. If you were looking you know, for a long lasting right? tire that'll go all year, but then we're getting into like IMCA racing. Well, I, and we all know how that, much how much people well, in New York like yeah, IMCA's. Wanna, I, you know I mean, what? I'd, lo- I'd love them extreme. if they'd give them a tire. Yeah, exactly. And that's, <laughs> that's the conversation we have. But those tires are meant to last. It, those tires are meant to last. Last but, and not to but, be able to get horsepower to the track. Yeah. Yeah. And they serve that purpose. They're yeah, hard so kind of. hard, hard, I mean, hard tires. You can make guys run an extra hard. You can do whatever you want. If you want to make those tires last, okay, you gotta run a forty eight. I mean, that's what you would do. And that I don't know. I think you know going in that tires are going to be expensive and you're going to buy them. If you're a top dollar team, you're going to buy a bunch of tires. If you're a lower dollar guy, you're going to make those tires well, last. And if you're a top dollar team, you're going to end up with a bunch of Hoosiers, you're a gonna bunch have of American you're racers. Have yeah, right, right. You know, if Goodyear were in place someplace you wanted to go, you'd have a bunch of those. Well, they things. used to be all the way in Saratoga. They, yeah, right. you, you had to have but, Goodyear. So. You know, you, they, you're talking three different tires. I, I personally would like to see them just kind of open that up to not necessarily – Run what your Bronx tire, but kind of limit it to. I just, you know, I just wish it was a compound. Like you could say, all right, this compound, this compound of Hoosier, this compound, this compound American Racer, and they were both similar tires, and they both could be run, and everybody and would be happy. It didn't matter. You pick whatever one you want. Right, exactly. Just run. Yeah. You've got these two options for American Racer. These two for her, for Hoosier. Yeah. They're all available here at the track. Right. Run what you want. Right. And, and you know, I, to be honest <laughs> with you, I'd like to see them do the same thing with the fuel. Yeah. With with VP uh, we and Sonoka. All, you know, and, and and the problem is, you know, we won't see that because no. it, ultimately it boils down to money. How much money is the organization making? Not, you know, and that's the biggest gripe you'll hear out of the drivers is like we don't get this money. <laughs> North North just said, and you're always going to have the ignorant guy who expects way way too much, and that's the problem. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's me. Yeah, yeah. No, we you know we all no, want we I, all want the rules to be so they can go run wherever they want, and unfortunately, that's not going to happen. You know, because we, because racing is a business. Exactly. It is That's, exactly. That the, is the, that and, is the and period I think the, on the conversation. The bottom line is the guys that I get thought about the most, or the least, I should say, when decisions are made, usually are who? I say the drivers. They're the last. Well, the, they oh, will, sure. I, they I, do. I, I thought we were putting the drivers in a hierarchy and looking at the guys no, that no, are no, budget no. weekend racers. No, no, Those no, are the I'm guys saying, that get overlooked okay, the most. But I'm, yeah. saying, but I'm yeah. saying the bottom line is when a track makes a decision, it looks at its drivers, yes, but it doesn't. It looks at its bottom line first. Well, yeah, you know, and, and I can understand business. that. I'm not I taking mean, that away from him, but you know, you got to give and take. I, uh, me personally, that's what I think. But it's a business, and where are the drivers going to go? Right. I mean, because yeah. unlike other businesses, Either run or don't. That's, yeah. That's well, but the options. other thing is this, though. I mean, it, unlike other businesses, when you open that gate, there's no guarantee. There's no guarantee people are going to show up. No guarantee cars are going to come. 
You know, when I worked at I-88, well, Afton, the new Afton Speedway, one week you get 12 miles. We, have, we, have, a new argument. we have a new argument. If you focus from eighth place on back, you'll be taking care of the racers. <laughs> Turns of payouts. Wow. Yeah, but again, you know what? We've proven time and again that it doesn't matter what you pay in the back because guys don't show up. Utica Rome paid 1000 to start and had a $200 to start B Main. And guess how many cars showed up for those races? 45. So what'd they do? They ended up cutting the purse, and guess what? We get the same amount of cars. And that's terrible. You know, guys say pay the guys in the back. Okay, so they paid a thousand to start a hundred lap race. Thousand dollars. Yep. A thousand grand. bucks. That's huge. And they got forty cars, maybe fifty. Okay. And then they also took another twenty cars that didn't make the show and paid all them two hundred dollars if he made the B main. So ultimately, guy, how many cars went home without money? Maybe like fifteen cars, twenty cars. Maybe. Yeah, and you know, and nobody showed up for those races. You know, you would expect a race paying a thousand to start to, to get seventy five cars, a hundred cars. Yep. Nope. Not this time. Nope. Pay ten grand to win, thousand to start. Now is that purse a thousand to start or from fifteenth on back? Sure, but still, it's a thousand to start. It's fifteen grand. Yeah, I mean that's a huge purse, and guys didn't come support it. So how can you justify that? Now the race pays four hundred to start, or whatever it is, four hundred or five hundred to start, and you get the same mm-hmm. amount of cars. You know, I had this Makes argument no with somebody. I can't remember who I was talking to this weekend. We were talking exact Tommy Meyer actually. We were talking about the exact same thing. You know, Eastern States gets 80 cars or whatever it gets, and, and now it's the prestige of the event. I know that. But that race only pays like 400 to start, something like that, and that's 200 laps at Orange County. You know, but it gets all those cars. You know, I, from right. my understanding, the purse is not spectacular from 10th on back, but they also start 44 cars. So all that, you know, obviously makes a difference. But again, Utica put up the money, they tried to help the little guy, and then the little guy didn't show up. You know, Because I, they go into the race thinking that no matter how much you get paid to start, no matter... How much is up there on top? They're looking at the spot from 12th, 15th. They're, they're, right. they're, they're realistic, right. saying, look, all I'm going to get out there is this, and what happens if I tear up my stuff? Right. Because I, mean, I, I still, still got to race on the weekend, right. and I got to protect but, my but stuff for the, the weekly deal. Here's, here's the sucky part about that, though. Utica, two of those shows are weekend shows. I mean, it's a, you know, they're both weekends. Like the one New Yorker was the end of the year, and the other one is, is Memorial Day weekend on Monday. Right. You know, so... It's at least a holiday program, right? Right, you know, and it just right, and they're it, and it's they so are it's so disappointing to see. You know, you hear this argument all the time: pay more in the back, care about the guys in the back. Okay, we Utica did it, and nobody and came, nothing happened, and nobody Didn't supported it. Well, New Egypt made a move that was taking care of the drivers. You're putting everybody in small oh, blocks. Here we go. Around, are we switching rid- gears to that now? We're gonna we're gonna I, go I that think, way. Uh, yeah, the gear oh. has been. Changed. Oh, this is this is you know. I'm just gonna leave this right open for I, you to I'll, have. I'll talk. Mike. I'll talk a little bit about it because it, it <laughs> honestly really irritates me because I love going to New Egypt. You know, a couple of things came out this week. Uh, Fred Valsing, buckle who is, up. Who is the <laughs> owner of uh, New Egypt Speedway? Made a decision. Uh, to go with dirt spec motor rules or Grandview Big Diamond rules, small blocks. So they went from 30 to 28 to 36, 38 big blocks a week now. To they're going to run sport or sportsman 358s as a headline class every week. You know, and I think it sums it up best when I you know when I I, I didn't realize it was official until I saw Ryan go down's Facebook page. You know, and he basically said, way to F up everything, you know, New <laughs> Egypt. You know, he didn't say it like that, but it was basically... <laughs> that was the that bottom was, line. That, that was, was the bottom line the of the gist. whole thing. And, you know, I have to agree. I hate... This sucks. Like, what's going on? Like, why... You're getting 30 cars a week. I understand you like small blocks. Great. Big blocks, in the long run, you can talk to car owners, whatever. They take more of abuse. Okay? They will last longer. Small blocks blow up more. And it's spending more money. It used to be, yeah, small blocks were cheaper. It used to be. I don't think that's the case it, anymore. It, it's not. I've talked to several drivers that'll tell you, you've got a one fresh in that small block motor way, way more frequently, way way more more. frequently yeah. than a big block. And, and, and again, they say the big block, you can abuse the crap out of it, yeah. and, and you still got a good motor. And, it just, I mean, you, know, you know who the guy that had the biggest smile on his face when he read this today? Doug Hoffman. Because Doug Hoffman runs Bridgeport, and they're going to run big blocks every oh, week on Saturday nights. And you know what? And they're going to make wait see, There's going to be guys. There's going to be a ton of guys now that are going to go there. I mean, I'm sure New Egypt will get its cars. I understand that. But I don't understand why you take a division that you're getting a full field. You know how many tracks in New York would be happy to get 28 to 30 cars every week? How many tracks? No doubt. Every one of them. I mean, yeah. Every there, one of there's them. There's not yeah. a single track that wouldn't kill I mean, to have a 30 car I would count. like to call him and, you know, at some point maybe have him on and talk to him about it. Like, what goes into this decision? Because, I mean, I don't want to be hostile, but it's it's very frustrating as a fan you know, to see, like, one of your favorite tracks makes such a drastic change that no matter what message board you read, whether it's South Jersey Dirt Racing, whether it's, you know, 
Dirt Track Digest, whichever one you read, they're they're all hammering everybody they're is hammering, hammering this decision. The drivers are all saying the same thing. So, I mean, you can look, you know, and, and the other sad part was a good friend of ours is no longer there employed, Danny Serrano. He's been on the show with us. Uh, he is no longer the general manager or promoter of New Egypt Speedway. They made a bunch of changes. It wasn't just one thing. They changed a whole bunch of things. So that was, you know, also part of the yeah, change. Yeah, it's tough for Danny. And it's that's sad to see bad. him go. And I, and I know. He'll you know, land on his feet, though. Yeah, he will. He'll and, be you know, fine. and that's sad, too, just because Danny. I hear you know, Orange County's like, looking for something. Yeah, yeah well, <laughs> Mike, Mike Sanchelli is no longer there. So, but, I mean. If that's true. Yeah, I, no, I'm pretty. I'm pretty. I'm 95% certain that is correct. But, uh, you know, and Danny getting let go. Yeah, I understand that's a business decision on their end, and that's fine. But, you know, like him or hate him, you know, there's people that hate him. There's people that like him, you know, and that's like all of us in racing. The guy, he slept, breathed, modified racing at New Egypt. You know, that's how I met him, at New Egypt back in the day. You know, I used to, you know, that's, and he cares about New Egypt, you know. And I knew this was coming a couple of weeks ago. I had, I had chatted with him, and he had led me to believe that this was going to be the decision. And it just it sucks for him. And I think it, it, it's things for the fans at New Egypt that they're now going to have Small blocks weekly. And I understand it works at Big Diamond and Grandview, but that's that's Big Diamond and Grandview. It's Big Diamond and Grandview. Yeah, I mean, you look at almost all these tracks around us; they all run them together. I don't understand why we couldn't figure out a way to run them together. And you know, it, even at Canandaigua Motorsports Park, if you want to run a three fifty eight, you you're can. Wel- you're welcome to. Right, Fonda runs uh-huh. them together. Utica well, runs them together. Remember when Burton gave Can-Am. home track three fifty eight points? Yeah, you and, could and run I it think, there. Who was it? Was it? Uh, uh, Maybe Mike Parati or somebody. I don't remember. Something I don't like remember. That. They would show up and, and, and right. make eight starts over the small well, block I remember. and get home track. Yeah, I mean, yep. it was the same thing at um, at Afton when uh, Richie yeah. Pratt was running. He would come up eight times because you get eight races yep. that counts for your home track points, and he ran a 358 series. He came to Mike Prentice. Came to that was it. Mike right. Prentice. I there got you the go. New. It there was uh, Zoopy. Yeah. <laughs> no, so, but to me, I don't know what people online are thinking, but this sucks. I, you know what I And do. that's all I can say. It sucks. Like, I was so upset when I heard this. Like, I almost was, like, going to cry because <laughs> I love New Egypt. Almost. It's, it's one of my favorite modified tracks to go to. Like, you know, you know how much I love sprint car racing, but there's a few modified I was, tracks. I was trying to put together a sprint car joke for you. Yeah. You know, if there was an know? engine change there, but there isn't one. No, I mean, but, I mean, it's just like, <laughs> no, this, they is, They're this pretty place basic. is such an amazing facility. It's an, it's, I, almost every time you go there, the racing's amazing. It's just a shame to see this happen to that. Like, just let's get rid of everybody that's here. Like, Ryan, go down. What was their What was their financial situation that would that that would force them to opt for a division other than? Big but according blocks? according to the to the reading, okay, what I read today, Lenny Sammons put a story together in Ariano that they want to just, you know, they're going to try to pay the same purse. So th- my question so is, this they're going they're not going to guarantee it. Which means they're not gonna, but they're not gonna guarantee it. <laughs> no, but <laughs> but that is what that means. Yeah, you know, yeah, we've heard it a million. If we're times. not gonna slap a guarantee on yeah, it, we're not you know, paying but, you that. But if you're that's gonna pay that, you don't want to see that. Why get rid of a division, getting thirty cars? You know, they'll say, well, Windsor, you know, did it. They had sixty cars, but ended up being successful. Yeah, but what happened to Windsor ten years later or whatever? And they're closing. You know, and, and whether whatever the reason, we're just fighting with family. But still, you know, New Egypt, or New Jersey doesn't have much left. This is it. I mean, there's three tracks. You got Wall, which is pavement, Bridgeport, and you got New Egypt. That's pretty much it for short track racing. Right. You know, yeah, so you're right. If if this happens if this doesn't work. Zoopy thinks this was a terrible move too. Yeah. You know, I guess I don't it, I've I've always operated with the theory that if it ain't broke, you don't fix it. I mean I mean he must I mean, see it as it being broken, but I, I don't think he I, I don't how know. Do you see, how do you see a, a I don't know steady thirty thirty big block count? How do you see that? They'll is, be back. Is They'll broken. be back to modifieds. I don't think so. You, I think you he's watch. dead set on it. Now they will be back. You're right. Big they blocks will. will be back in early yeah. June when Brett For Dale the promotes Dale a season. Super, yeah, when Brett Dale supports. That wasn't promotes. where I was going, but that was a great move. Yeah. <laughs> by the way, I did talk to Brett today because I wanted to ask him how this move affects him. He's already been guaranteed by the track. His show is a go. So their show, their their Dirty Jersey 60, is still a go. And still good to go. So that show is on the card. That show is we, on. But we should be putting that show on the card. That's oh, I, I would love to believe me. I would when love is it? to. It's a midweek in June. Midweek, in a week June. before Regents exams. The week. Oh, <laughs> perfect. Let me take uh, a day off to go four and a half hours from home. So what? What else have you got to do? <laughs> yeah, nothing. Nothing. Did you, know? you your, did you get your SLO together yet? Yeah, I did get my SLO did? together. Yeah. Student learning objectives, also yeah. known as slow. Yeah, <laughs> came up with that. 
Yep. All my students, they're all somebody my, in the state. All my government. students are on my slow. <laughs> yeah. Somebody in the state government. Did you have to? Did you have to go through it. and pick the uh, pick the ethnic background of each of your students? No, I didn't have to do that. You didn't have to. Did you have to predict which ones were weren't going to pass? No, nope, I didn't no? have to do any of that. I just I had copy and pasted an email they sent me. That's I will I will lucky. say this. You know the best part about what I'm being graded on? I know we're really changing subjects here, but we'll, we'll get back to the. Modifies. I am being graded on how my kids do on the ninth grade math final or ninth grade integrated <laughs> algebra regents exam. And for those of you out there, I teach global studies. Because there's no post test for global studies, so your your assessment is going to be how those your kids personal do on the math. teaching assessment comes. Part out of my assessment, right? How it's, they it's do a on portion of my else. assessment will be how they do on that math test. Yeah, it's stupid, but hey, you know what? New York the, State uh, wanted all this money, yeah, so now they got New York State education. The, yeah, the, the, the quote from New Egypt uh, included: "The Big Black Modified Division is decreasing every year." So, so we're gonna get rid of the modified division altogether and go. Now, Where are, is are it they, not? Are they? Are they? Where is it not going are they, down? Well, if that's the case, then it makes sense to to, to go to a, a, a less expensive a, a less expensive class. Well, if you're gonna do this that, is no, no different. This no. is the, this is the no different than the, than the, than the move that BlackRock no. did when they moved from the 358 modifies to the Sportsman and they increased their car so, count. So it, that's great. This There's is not a crap, but they had a solid. There's a cra- there is a crap ton of Sportsmen out there. So if if by that theory, let's dump the big block class and let's just run Sportsman because we can. We can we can run make a, money on sportsmen. We yeah, can, we can run a, a crate sportsman, you know a Fine. budget sportsman. Do that, but you know and what? Not and not pay the huge payout. Right. Then do that. So then, let's skip the three fifty eight all together. Th- yeah, okay. And then yeah. you know what you're doing then? Because and this is what this you're is cut, what you're doing. Well, you won. You're, you're cutting paying your, own your back gate. You're paying your purse out of your back gate. Right. And if you get twenty fans in the stands, you don't care. That that's how I look at it. If you're going to cut, you know, some tracks can't afford modifieds. I understand that, and you have to not run modifieds. New Egypt but, could pull off a fifty thousand show now, fifty thousand to win show like Grandview. Yeah, that would be cool. They could think, think about the money they're saving. Yeah, <laughs> with yeah, a purse okay. that's not guaranteed. Yeah, <laughs> I don't know. It's just it's so. Frustrating. They're only saving money if they're putting people. You know, again, the what what can I really say? I don't go there weekly, so it's not like I can go I mean, in there and say you, what. The, right. You know. You know. I've. But, not, I'll be honest. I've never been there. All I hope but, is Ron John Cozon continues to run on a weekly. Basis. Yeah, I don't think he's there every week. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it, it was just just disheartening. You know. Okay, you can say the car counts are going down, but. Where are car counts not going down? And you know what? You can run small blocks all you want. It doesn't change it. Car counts are going down because the economy still so it, sucks. Especially, nothing, especially in the small block block ranks, I would think. I mean, with the, with the money you've got to put in for the, the I just think I honestly whatnot. think it's more money to run a spec spec. You know, I'd like to get an engine builder. But that's here. that's where we need to cross. That's that's where we need to, to dot our eyes and cross our t's because do you the research it, and see what the because right. you cost need to know is. what the cost of a spec. 358 is if a spec 358 engine is somewhere in the vicinity of, of five even ten grand compared no, to it just go up there's no way it's that cheap it's I, a three thousand a three thousand dollar sportsman motor that's a crate these aren't crates though they're still professionally built engines they just have spec heads and i'll put that term loosely. so they're 25 grand so okay yeah. and a big box 40 40 okay. grand so you're right. saving 15 so, grand off the top okay, before then, you even before you even turn the key you're, okay you're, you're and, but then look grand. at look at the other thing you can say you know, they'll say, well, they use less fuel. Okay, great, whatever. You know what? I got to buy racing fuel no matter what. If it saves me eight bucks a week, I really... Sh- if I'm concerned about $16 a week, I'm I not, shouldn't I'm not be racing. racing. I shouldn't be racing. That's the bottom line. I don't want to see anybody not race. Well, but, you shouldn't be you racing know, I, at, I, that, at that level. Right, exactly. And I've talked to guys, you know, that are that are racing sprint cars or whatever, and they say, you know, if, if you look at your cost and you can't, you know, that $200 to go put the fuel in the truck makes or breaks your weekend... You okay. probably shouldn't be racing. You know, it's not anything personal. It's just you don't have the finances to do yeah, you, what you're doing. You but can, we all know racers are going to do whatever well, they want to do. Racers are going to do it. They're going to go broke doing it. But right, you right. Know, there, so there's, so there's what's other the difference le- if they're going to go broke doing it one or the other? What's the difference between whether they're putting 358s in it and, and changing the face of the track and getting away from something that's dwindling or if they just stick with but modifieds it's not and wait for it to the bowl? That argument is only valid if it's actually true. If you're still getting thirty cars, <laughs> if the track owner says that, then obviously there's got to be some 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 some. The argument of truth is to we it. made we had thirty six in the year, and now we have twenty eight. Okay, you lost eight cars over the course of an entire season. You know what? There'd be a lot of tracks to be happy with that. That only there's a lot of many. tracks that do that just due to attrition. Right, it has nothing to do with with, right. with anything that they know going in that they're going to lose a certain percentage of their right. other yeah. car count. And plus, you look you at this that. season. This is a different season, unlike any other. We almost had zero rainouts. Very, I mean, I think I had little. three rainouts. I mean, I went through my schedule, my race schedule the other day, you know, and I'm looking at how many rainouts I had. I had like six total for the whole year. They had two at Canada. Yeah, I mean, year. six all year. Last I mean, year, last year they had six in the first eight weeks. Yeah, I know. That's how fond it so, was. Utica was. I mean, it was yeah. like that everywhere. But yeah, and this year was just so much racing. You're gonna lose cars. 
Guys you, can't afford it. You're gonna lose, they can't run twenty weeks. You're twenty two races. No, you're gonna lose those. You're gonna lose. You're gonna lose cars four, no matter what. Four or five, even if they don't break. Even exactly if, because they're gonna run themselves Finances, out of their budget. Right. They're exactly. just going to do it. Right. I mean, there, there's here's there's some more. Be a here's some more stuff coming in. Three fifty eight. Uh, top level Morrison twenty three thousand ERD is twenty six. Enders is about twenty five. Uh, big blocks are not going to sustain themselves ten years from now. Uh, that that I disagree with. How that. What? They're not going to be able to, what's the, the, the quote or, from the quote, I, and I'm having a hard time seeing it because the, the font quote so from small. the paper was that big blocks are yeah. not going to sustain themselves. That was the <laughs> exact ten quote years from the paper was uh, not going to sustain themselves ten years from now. Uh, that I just if, if you're making your decision now based on what's going to happen ten years down the road, you better keep your fingers crossed so that everybody wants to go to 358s. Who else is going to do it though? I mean Bridgeport. Who else? Who else is going to do it? There's only Bridgeport there. That's it. And Bridgeport's going to say thank you. We're well, going to run big block. Well, yeah. <laughs> well, well they are going to run I mean, exactly opposite what you're running because right. you just gave up all your. You just gave up all cars. your big block cars. You just told them go race somewhere else. You know. You know. There's a couple guys I know. I read in the article Johnny McClelland is probably going to go to Orange County. That that's what he's talking about doing Johnny Mac because he's got a big block. Dominic Buffalino said it in the story. He's going to go to Bridgeport. They don't have a small block. You know these guys have equipment. They can't just. Well, yeah, not not your established. Yeah, because with, you, with your those, big block. Equipment. Those drivers, those drivers are not going to sell their big blocks. No, they're not going to get rid of block them. drivers. Yeah, not everybody wants to run a small block. It, well, even if they if, did, if they would not, go to if they're not big block. If they're not big block drivers, they're definitely big block teams. They're not going right. to sell off their equipment because there's too many big dollar big block shows right. to not have an engine. Right. I mean, right. The, at the end of the year, there's probably there's enough shows that the, the, the uh, make it justifiable to have a big block. One hundred twenty five grand worth of, of yeah. winning yeah. money. I don't know. It just for big blocks. to me, it doesn't make sense. No, you can understand I'm, you like small blocks. You think they're great. Okay, three fifty eight, three fifty eight, three fifty eight engines last longer. I disagree. I don't think so. I don't, every I don't know owner how, I have talked no to, way. <laughs> every owner I have talked to about this, and I I've talked around about this because I I this is another thing I knew it was coming. That you know you can't talk about because it's all off the record stuff that you can't talk about. But you know it's coming. You know when I've talked to the various people involved in this, I knew it was coming. And everybody I've chatted with will tell you that the big block takes less maintenance and less refreshing and all that other stuff you have to do to get through a season. I mean, and that's the consensus. I mean, I'm not making this up. This is from talking. I mean, Rich, you've talked to guys. Yeah, and that's the the sentiment that I've gotten talking to the people that have run both the big block and the small block. It, well, it's at, cost them more. You're, you're look at Matt. Matt talked about that extensively when he was on the show. And yeah. He talked about how many different small block types there are too. And right. It's just right. not reasonable to have one motor for each one of those small block situations. Right. You know, it just yeah, you know you get into such a specialized. I you don't know, know. You're going to run this these rules and right. And the this next track's running a different. Everybody's running different rules. You're you're going to have a very limited car count in that that small block division. Yeah. So I mean. Good I move. think it's I think it's foolish. Ultimately, Wrap it up. Good move. Bad move. I, I ultimately, I don't like it. Bad move. Rich, bad move. I think it's I think it's the smartest decision they could have made. Just to just, just to, to be <laughs> different than both of us. <laughs> just to be that guy. Well, you know what they say about you. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, let's look ahead now. We got North. Up. We got somebody that wants to wants to say something. So why don't you what's keep going? I'm gonna I'm gonna. Well, well what's he want to say? He's, he's trying to type it in. He's been he's been feeding me some information about um, stuff and and giving some thoughts okay. from. From his point of view and and things like that. By the way, we also have uh, uh, Jessica Powers' crew was was on here and told us that we need a landline. <laughs> uh, uh, <laughs> I said we we did we, 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 we did, did have a landline and, and so did she. Uh, oh, really? I, I I got no answer for it. Other than, you, something's going on at the border, man. Something's getting <laughs> lost in translation and customs. Damn, <laughs> Damn Canadians. <laughs> yeah. Well, she wasn't she, she wasn't talking in French. We're gonna like yeah, when, I know, when I you had God because who was oh, who was yeah. on the show? Steve I, Poirier. Yeah. <laughs> Steve boy, yeah. we'd have been lost if she went into French. That was awesome. Uh, you don't well, teach that. Somebody, too, do you? somebody jumped in and uh, North said, "Can I say something?" And uh, I think it's Pico Stick again. It's pretty small. I'm having a hard time reading it. Uh, a track can survive without big blocks. Big blocks are for big tracks. Uh, here we go. The, the current 358 spec motor is the best motor combination now in production. We just need World Racing Group's tech. Not gonna happen. How about that? They did that, th- Danny Johnson. <laughs> how that? How, how did that, that come out? Goal? I haven't heard anything yet. I nothing. I, 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 anything uh, yet. How, nothing. How do you? How do you think it's going to come? Now, out? I don't know. I, you don't know. I don't <laughs> yeah. know any. I don't know anything about. Be, let's be honest. When it comes to like, if you told me to find something illegal on a car, I could find ported heads because I've seen one. Other than that, you know, I don't. I, the only thing. How about I a fuel know, cell? Could you find it illegal? Yes, I could find that. <laughs> I too. know where to look for those. Yeah, but the the one thing I know is what I've been told, and 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 that's what I'm saying from people that I've talked to. 
You know, read online. Read Jake Spraker's comments on Dirt Track Dodgers this week when this all came out. He said it's cheaper. it was cheaper for him to run a big block. And the resale value on those big blocks was more. Sure. You know? Well, I don't doubt that that. I, 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 don't, I don't disagree with that. I'm sure that's You don't know, but I'm saying, like, it, it just, to me, I don't know why you just destroy your premier division. You had one car. And the one car that was running it, or maybe he had four, but the one guy that was running it weekly was the car owner, was the track owner, and it was his driver that ran it. You know, that's the only guy that had it. The current 358 spec motor combination is the most cost-effective motor in the Northeast. According to who? Yeah, who? According to North. I, I, right, I, but, I got nicknames. What, what I'm you, at, I mean, I understand that, but what I'm asking Email is, us, you know, where, if, if where, he wants to be, no, no, if he wants to have that assessment, have them email us. Well, this is he's. I just want to know I'm, who we're I'm talking to. I'm having trouble keeping here. track because we got we got north and we got and like I said, I'm having a, it's. I'm pretty sure this is a Pico stick. We'll have them email and us. There's information. One of these two is with an their engine. name. Don't one of these two. One of these two is an engine builder. Okay, they, which is which is good. What I want, but email us who you are so we can so we can. Yeah, I would I would love to because you know what? Next week, <laughs> you're gonna have a phone call. <laughs> I'm fine with it. I'm you okay. know what exactly. I mean? I think that'd be great. Have yeah, somebody sure. on that can uh, actually and, talk about it. And I'm not saying they're wrong. I'm just saying where. No, you, no. From what what's we, the source? Where? Right. Where exactly? What that's what we're about. What isn't? I As mean, a media person, I have to ask: Where's the information coming from? And yeah. I'm saying, based I can on tell what you. I've gotten in the pits, this is what I've been told. And th- and that's where I'm I'm developing my opinion is from. Right. And I just want to reiterate. I just want to reiterate the combination. I I I almost brought up the point that he made a minute ago. Kind of. A lot of it was true. What <laughs> we talked about the the affordability of the motor, right? So so it's what? cheaper. So what? It's a your initial investment is cheaper. <laughs> but if I have four big blocks sitting on the shop on the ground at home, and I've got to go out and buy three small blocks, yeah. I mean, it's just it, uh, from, yeah. it, it doesn't it it drives me nuts to to see you know, and, and it's like anything. Like you'll see a track, you know, they'll just change rules on a whim, and it's like, what are you doing? Right, and, and they're changing. It, it's not like they're changing to something that. Fourteen hundred laps on the spec combination. Okay, and how, and how many on a big block? Because that's something I don't know. Yeah. So you're getting fourteen hundred on the spec option, small block. What are you getting on a big block motor? Is that Vic with Vic Coffee? And, Vic Coffee told me that one time, and I can't remember what the figure was. Was it more than fourteen hundred laps? You don't no, know. No, no, it was not. It wasn't. Well, I, we'll bet, talk. I, I, I can tell you. I this. don't know if well, it was. It's not a four ten sprint car motor, which is basically every three races, <laughs> <laughs> which is almost a hundred laps. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm, <not quite>. uh, <laughs> but uh, all right. So all right, I got some. I got some information these, trying to get these guys to to reveal themselves. They're continuing you know to put just, some information out there, which is good information. Email, if it's, if you know it's, what? If you're in the in the business and you can tell us something, email us. Yeah, and we'll talk about it. We're willing to listen. Email, uh, it, I'll take any perspective at this point, and then next week, if we can get some information. We'll have you on, and then if I can get someone else, you know, to talk about big blocks, then we'll do that too. You know, we're gonna have a whole engine builder's guide here. <laughs> you know what? How great would it be to have something like that put together? Uh, the parts parts peddler. peddler. Yeah, that would be yeah, sweet. Yeah, buddy, that would be sweet. Uh, okay, uh, we got tons of laps. Wow, this is tons of laps. Well, that's that's a three year old sportsman crate motor, and again, that's that's the point that Mike made. Is this is two different things? We're talking about a spec motor, which is a built engine still, with, with a specific fa- pads. It's not a factory and there's a crate motor, motor right. from for from, from Chevy. The GM. Yeah, from and General those, Motors. Those motors, those GM crate motors, those the engines are designed to go forever. Yeah, they that, got over fourteen hundred laps. They answered right, your question exactly, with it. Exactly. This is different. This is a three fifty eight motor. It's not a crate motor. It's a spec motor. So it just has the spec heads on it, but all the rest of it is still a racing engine. You know what so I'm maybe they need to go to crate motors. <laughs> oh God, shoot me now! Well, there was been no, there's, there's no, been, <laughs> no. We are not going to crate motors. We there's have enough been crate there's motors been practice. Crap. There's there's been races run with crate big blocks. No, I don't care. It's been done. The five twenty five, right? The five twenty five, and it did okay. Sure, but I don't want to see crate motors and big block racing. You wouldn't know the. Difference. You know what? If you put a crate you motor in a sprint difference. car, you're, you're out of your mind. You I mean, wouldn't even know the. If, yeah, if there bull are crate crap. motors. You, you wouldn't know, know why? The difference because crate motors sound like a pickup truck, they not a race car. Like you're <laughs> they idle next to you, like is that a race car or is it my Cavalier? <laughs> First of all. <laughs> 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 they don't sound uh, like a race car. I'm sorry. They they sound just fine. No, they don't. Uh, but don't. you know what? You want to know something? That is somebody something that somebody brought up the point of that that a, that a a spec 358 sounds just as good on a small track as a big block sounds on a big track. 
So I don't know. Wow. What about what about the home? No, because you know why? Because I go keep boom, 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 at the end of the straightaway, and I freaking hate that too. <laughs> Look at this. I can't. Uh, that's We're still going. Still Just, going on this. Oh man, did we open one up this awesome. week? Awesome! <laughs> I love it. I love it. The sportsman crew is still in there. Uh, Just Powers crew guys. Just, yeah. What class had the highest car counts though? More guys followed the sportsman tour than the 358 tour. That's fine. I'm but okay with that's, that. That's, that's dirt what, car. That's that's probably that's exactly dirt car. Dirt right. car, but. All the same. And I'm fine with, listen, that's fine. Car counts. New England good. needs to rethink their decision. It's really going to hurt a lot of things in racing. I just don't get it. It's irresponsible. Thank you. Somebody listen to us. Uh, somebody, and, somebody, and, somebody, and somebody's attention. logical. Fight, no, I'm just kidding. That guys. was Zoopy. <laughs> uh, and oh, by the never, way, Tampa Bay is up three to nothing over Minnesota. <laughs> oh, that's a hell of a game. we got to run home for that one. <laughs> But uh, but anyway, so that uh, that's that. Well, you know. But again, if you can contact us, yeah, he said he's gonna. I, oh, I yeah, threw my email out there. Drop you know. us an email, and we'll talk. We love you know. Listen, that's why we debate. That's why we have the show. We like to talk, and we like to interact with the fans, and it's and, cool. And that everybody's are, on there. They're and get, on each other. Too. That's awesome. That's awesome. That's what we want to see. <laughs> Unfortunately, our that's numbers aren't as high this week as they were last week. I hope everybody gets a chance to take this in. You know, I, this is why you got to watch live. Uh, Fingerlinks one chat, TV. Yeah. You got to be on here for the live chat because you can. Uh, ooh, another good point. What happened to Canon when they went big block? That was a totally different situation because How? because that was like ten years ago and they were the <laughs> only ones that did it. It's not like listen that was they, a cha- they were living in a small L- block listen, world. You look at yeah they and went from they went exactly. to something that was they did exactly unique. what New Egypt is doing except they did the opposite. Right, New Egypt is in a big block world, man. There's two tracks they both run big blocks. You got Delaware, they run big blocks. Boy, this guy <laughs> this guy man. is not happy with you. They opened the rules. When Cannon went to big block, it, it ruined a bunch of things. Zuby says it ruined a bunch of things in Central New York. It forced Fulton to go big Fulton block. Fulton big block and everybody and it began hated that. the downfall of Cannon Degla full And that small wasn't block. that wasn't the that downfall the downfall of, of Degla was whoa, not. Whoa, whoa. Wasn't that the downfall of open small blocks though? Honestly, when that when Can-Am dropped small blocks and went to big block, that was the downfall of what we know as well. There was small there was no racing. small block tracks around anymore. Black Rock Utica, at that point. Utica Black Rock had on. small blocks. Utica hung on. Yep. You had Black Rock. You had Fulton. You had Fulton all the, didn't. Fulton. Fulton, Fulton was forced. Was, Fulton, Fulton was forced into big block though. Right, because they were the last one. It was right. them and Utica were like the last two to that go. Was it. Ransomville yeah. still runs small blocks, right? But that's Western yep. New York. That's different. So that's you're not you're not counting that. That's fair. That's no, fair. no. You, how can you? Because they you, have well, Maryville. I, 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 I was yeah, looking. You've got to stay within a. Re- you got to stay within, within a region. No, I, I, that's I all. was I was staying in a region. I was looking under the dirt banner. Right, but that that's always been a dirt sanctioned small block track. Right, and they when dirt decided to change, they followed that change with the rev chip and all that other stuff. And Merrittville went with them, so it made sense for Ransomville to do that because they were staying with what was out there. Yeah, I think what I like about about the big block is is you're not looking at the rev chip. You're not there. There's so many other factors that play in into the small block motor. With the big block motor, it's here's your cubic inch. Have Go at racing, it. yeah. But exactly. if the big block, have at it. but if, if you, the big block is supposed to be the premier division, it shouldn't have a rev rev chip. It shouldn't no, it have, shouldn't a, have all, those, yeah, all the it steps should, leading no. up to that should have some sort of of, of isolated I controls. That, I, you know, I don't have a problem with that. Then your Personally, small block motor should be a crate small block. That's uh, what I'm saying. That's just <laughs> well, I'm, stupid. I'm, I'm, did you see the rules it, this was weekend? It, was it stupid when they went to Crate Sportsman? Was I it stupid when they went to Crate Sportsman? I don't Sportsman? think so. Listen, and I don't I'll think, tell you why I because was, go ahead. I was. I don't think it was foolish because if they had not gone to a Crate motor for a Sportsman, I'd have never been in one. I'd have never driven one. Right, and I understand that. And that was it stupid? Period. Was it stupid when they opened the Crate motor up to the Pro Stock cars? It worked out well. It, I mean, the, they're still around. They they're they have not, a great foothold. But, but they have a great foothold up in Canada. But here's the difference. Yeah, but that's I it. I think it works well at the the quote entry level or support classes, support support, support class. divisions. It works good. Because I think that it works is a, well. That's an entry level division. You know, you can say what you want, but sportsman racing is an entry. You know, it's an entry I don't care level if you run it for wheel, modified racing. Right. If you run it for twenty years, it is. It's a, it's a stair step class. Right. That's exactly. And, and no offense. That's to what it was that supposed to be since the beginning. Right. And no offense to anybody that races sportsman, but it's a a it, gateway to modified racing. That's what it's supposed right. to be, and that's what it's designed to be. Right. And if you can't afford to go big block, you have to have an affordable option in putting a a a crate three fifty eight program together. Not spec like we're talking about. A crate three fifty eight program no. would open that up. I I agree with that, Chris. I do. You know what? I hate. Here's why I don't like crate racing because everybody's the same. You don't see a guy start twentieth you know in a winter race. It's but, too hard. You but can't. What, but what happens then? It's now you're gonna run. You're gonna run in a pack. You're gonna learn a hell of a lot quicker. No, I don't like it. I, I think you're building better drivers that way. I don't think so. I do. I now now there's I'm not a, a crate guy. There's a a, a large. I, I like you don't it. have to be a crate guy. But I you understand have to. it increases car counts. I understand that, but it doesn't make the racing better. 
And that's why I go to the races to watch the racing. But how could you say that it doesn't make the racing better? It doesn't better. make the racing See, better. But, it but certainly has fl- made the racing better for the sportsman, guys. It has. No, yeah. without and question. I'll tell you, and it's I'll tell made more you, cars. You, it has not made, made better more, racing. It, 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 I think it has made more cars. It has made better racing. Because I don't now, think so. Listen, it, if I wanted to watch a who wants to spend the most money to go win a race. We I'm do. Gonna, it's called Big Blocks. Right. I'm going to watch a, <laughs> I'm gonna watch a Big Block race. So, so thank you for leaning into my point. No, but but still. If you're going to, if if I wanted to watch that at the sportsman level, I'd be pulling for an open motor because you can watch a guy go spend 20 grand okay, and fine. go out and spank the field. And he, he doesn't have to have a lick of driving ability. No, that's not true. We've yeah. seen guys spend tons of money and they still suck. And I'm not going <laughs> to yeah, name they, names but and throw they, anybody under the but bus. But they suck. Extra hard because I've seen guys that Big, are so decent drivers, not great, not good. They're decent. Go out and spend more money than the next guy who's a better driver than him, and he goes out and, and okay, beats so him on a We can sit here and we can. The nip current it. Dirt 358 Listen. rule package is very attractive to drivers moving up. If dirt techs the current 358, right. they will be I mean, successful. We can, Listen, Big we blocks can. are for whoever wants to get there. It's just a spec head. You don't need to tech them, I think is what he's trying to say there. Yeah, listen, we can Zoopy, Zoopy's on board with you. Too much crate racing is just bumper cars. Yeah, it is. It, 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 does, mean, it does get that way. But. And that's what sucks, and that's why I don't like it, because I want to see I want to see racing. I don't want to see do. guys getting in line. Follow, okay, it's great if they want to move up. Okay, as an announcer, let's, let's look at it from that perspective. When I'm calling yeah, a that's, race. Yeah, that's one that everybody sure. can relate to, Mike. No, but I'm saying, when you're, when <laughs> you're sure. calling a race, you want to see... You the, want to see action. You don't want to have to manufacture it. You don't exactly. want to have to be the announcer. You know what I'm talking about. You don't want to have to be the announcer. Says, oh, it looks like the leader smoking going into turn oh, three. Yeah. <laughs> Exactly. Yeah, you, you you don't. But what I, what I'm trying to get at is is putting all these guys. If he can get in a word, line, go ahead, Rich. They, put, <laughs> putting all these sportsman guys in line and having them all on top of each other, it's going to teach them how to drive within the pack. And line. you're going to wreck a lot of crap. I agree. But <laughs> how, you like to watch. You like to watch racing. I don't. Wanna, I like to watch racing. I don't like wrecks. I like racing. I don't like watching these guys wreck because I know most of them. I know what it does. To I them. don't like wrecking. But I like racing. There's fifty percent. Why of do it. you watch sprint cars? I'm good because yeah. when they wreck, they wreck hard. Yeah, but but there's there's also that element in the grandstands that want to see a little oh, I know. That's they why don't everybody goes see, to Talladega they, and Daytona. I, and I, I, you and know what? I, I understand hate that. Both I that don't, crap too. That's not what I'm there for. I don't like watching guys no, tear up either. equipment. I don't want to see anybody spend, money. Spend, spend that kind of money. But there's people that enjoy watching the carnage. They yeah. don't want to see their big block guy go go destroy his car. No. But they want to see carnage. I mean, let's, you know, I, I'd like let's to be real. What do you watch a street stock race for? Because <laughs> they, they beat, they bang, and they make a race out of There's it. There's a lot of things to say to that. That was a loaded question. <laughs> it was a very loaded <laughs> question. <laughs> but, you know, I, I kind of like the crate deal because, one, I'd have never, I, I I'd have never been Listen, able to I'm do not it. knocking. Like, I've had this argument with my with the Images by DC, Derek Covey, a bunch of times. I don't like crates. I don't have to like crates, but if it helps save a racetrack, fine, run them. I don't care. I'm not a fan of it. That's all I'm saying. And I'm not, you know, you can like it, and I understand why you like it, and I, and you understand why I don't like it. No, I, I know, definitely, and we're, I and we're just agreeing. I, I understand. We're, we're just agreeing we're to disagree gonna, on yeah. this one, and 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 that's fine. And I want to see guys get into racing. I want to see cars at the track. I want to see all that, and I understand a crate motor is the most viable option for that. I don't want to see it above an entry level class, though. I don't. That's why they have entry level classes, and that's where you learn there. If you can't afford to go race a big block or or small block, then don't. See I mean, now, and I would ag- I would agree with. All of that up to the point that if we could get all the people running different small block motor packages, the, the different tracks. Honestly, you know. If you could get them all together to run. You're never going to happen. I just wish they would do right. this. It's not going to happen. I just wish they'd do this. Okay, listen. You can run a big block. You can run a small block. Run whatever you want. Big block, 2,500 pounds. Small block, 2,400 pounds. Do whatever you want. You want to run a 558 cubic inch big block like they do in Delaware? Go, Go for ahead. it. Good luck. You want to run a ported freaking motor with dome pistons? Go for it. I, Whatever. I mean, we already know guys are going to spend. If there's a, gonna, there's there's that much space in the rules, to they're going to they're going to bend, bend, bend the rules. Here's, you know, here's they, a good point that you you can agree with this. Innovation needs to be returned to the sport. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with that one. I mean, if you just make the small and, as it is and now, our, in our our resident sportsman rep says that there are drivers that race crate engines and they start at the back of the pack because of handicapping and finish up front every week. It does create better drivers and it does create closer racing. I watch that every Saturday. They're every, not wrong. I'm just every not to, not to uh, <laughs> You can <laughs> you can sit you can sit there and you and you can put that yawn out and, See, I, and I understand you know it. I go to Utica and we have open sportsmen still. We get about twenty, twenty four, and the racing's great. I mean that's what I'm basing my argument off of. It, you know what? I and watch I'm, Matt Jensen win from fifteenth. I'm fine with that. 
Or I watched Jeremy Funk went from 15th. And, I'm fine with that I, too. And I, mean, I watch I boy. watch Paul Guerrero and Dan, Danny, Danny Wiesner. Wiesner on a Eric routine Jaguar. basis. Justin Henderson. Run from the back end of the pack. Justin, Todd. I mean, th- there's probably 10 of them. Kevin Ridley. Right. Kevin Ridley, they, yeah. They sure. start their handicap to the back of, back of the field. And they finish in the top ten. five to seven, top ten. They don't win. Every, bull. Very rarely. Very mm-hmm. rare do you get a guy starting that far back winning. In crate uh, racing. Wiesner's, I think Wiesner did it. Now, you know, now uh, don't hold me to the you know number what, we because probably, I'm not sitting at the stats. You know stats. what? We should just do He's done it at least four or Rich, five times in Rich, one year. you forgot Jessica Power. I'm very <laughs> sorry. I forgot to see. I don't watch Jessica Race. Uh, yeah. So I, I did, mean, again, I we're going to agree to disagree. I mean, that's it. It's... I mean, I think we've killed this horse we've, at this point. <laughs> I think we've killed it. We've hit it a couple more times and then back to truck. Done. <laughs> Let's go to Hagerstown. Where's, uh, Hagerstown. That? We got racing coming up. Yeah. Modifieds. With Craig Sportsman, right? No, wait. Not a chance. <laughs> 410 sprint cars. 2020 Craig Sportsman. 358 That's what sprint cars. For. Uh, big box, small block modifieds together and late models. Uh, looking at the entry list right now, about 24 sprint cars. Uh, 15, 358, somewhere in that neck of the woods. Uh Almost 35 to 40 late models uh, already pre-registered. And then the modifies right now is at about 20, 22, somewhere in that neck of the woods. But again, race day, everybody comes out of the woodwork. Yeah. You know that. Yeah, um, well, yeah, you got the guy that hasn't made his mind up yet. Now, I'm wondering, is Brett Hearn going to win again? 10, 10 Gs on the line, unless there's less than 35 cars, then it's 7,500. But still, a nice payday. I thought about picking him at Dirt Week. Yeah, you should have, and you didn't. You should have. Went, went another way. And you didn't <laughs> pick him at Eastern States. Final, yeah, I just, didn't pick him for Eastern States. One final thought. This is, this is the best thing all night. Jessica, uh, uh, Jessica Powers' team just, just offered us a thought and said, Mike disagrees with it because he wants to put wings on everything. <laughs> 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 I can tell you this. You put a crate motor in sprint cars, I'm not going to be happy with that either. But he'll go watch. Yeah, oh my I'll, god, that's Craig Ravel just texted what you said. <laughs> <laughs> they should have great sprint. Craig, we are no longer on speaking terms. All right, let him know we it's are okay. no longer talking, Craig. That's okay, Craig. You're not missing. Yeah, much. he's actually he's actually getting the better end of that deal. I think. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay. uh, no, I, <laughs> no, but Hagerstown, you I know, again, skipped turn. Yeah, I know. I'm not skipping him this you, week. You're going to take him and win in the modified I'm going to take him to win in any – if somebody gives him a late model, I pick him. Yeah. He's <laughs> I don't care. You know what? Whatever he's good he's at Hagerstown, too, because it, yes, he is. when they used to run modifieds back in, like, early March, they'd have a couple races before the Super And he would win every one He won one every one. Every one. Every one. one of them. Every one of them. He is just so good at Hagerstown. Do you yeah. know he's got over 400 career wins at Hagerstown alone? Yeah. Yeah. That's okay. <laughs> That's half of his 800. <laughs> no. Um, but, no, no this he, year is something different with that, though. It's only 50 laps. And they're He's running the big blocks and the small blocks together, together because right. the last couple of years they just ha- n- have just not been, gotten car counts. Hasn't been there. I, w- I don't know why either. I mean, it pays. I mean, last year Ernie Davis, Ernie Davis stepped up. If you remember, they paid ten thousand dollars. They paid ten thousand, right. and they, because and they were going to pay five because they didn't have any cars. I don't know what happened because when I used to go to that race, I mean, I'll assume mm-hmm. this. I, I mean, I can go out and I can take a stretch and say because the racing can get very locked down on Sunday. Like if you're in the rotation and your rotation is early, it's not so bad. You know, there's some passing, but the later in the day you go. The later, the more rubber gets down, and the more it's just up sucker central and, uh, you know, stay down there and, yep. and go for it. So, I mean, it's it's daytime racing. We all know what we get into at daytime racing. I don't care where you go. Man. Nine times out of ten, daytime racing sucks. Sucks. Yeah, yeah, but what do you do in the fall and in, in, in late 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 summer, whatever well, you, you want to call it? You have to good. run during the day. You Remember when we were down there for the Oktoberfest one year, and it was, like, freezing and, degrees. like, snowing? It was yeah. freaking cold, man. It was cold. Man. cold. I went, I went Bad down. cold. Yeah, I went oh, I went to the series race. Yeah, I went the down one for year, a series And it opener. was, like, 17 degrees. The wind was, oh, my God, was it cold. It freaking snowed. I went yeah. down with my wife. We were sitting at breakfast at Denny's, and Tom Skubinski texted me and said, oh, yeah, by the way, the race is off. Yeah. There was that. There was that. That March yeah. event. And I was like, we just drove five we just hours got here for, for breakfast. Nothing. <laughs> I hope the breakfast was good. Yeah, Hagerstown's good. And again, don't forget uh, National Quarter Mile Dirt Championships this weekend at Five Mile Point. Uh, Friday night they got the Sportsman race, big money on the line there. And then Saturday is uh, the ROC uh, Championship. Uh, I think they're going to get a, a hell of a car count. Yeah, for they're, that they're going to be show. good. They're going to be good with Sportsman, the Open Sportsman, and then they're going to be good on Saturday too for the modifieds. Yeah, you know everybody looking to win that uh, race of champions title. So if you guys got a shot at that, off the top of my head, I don't know who it is. But, uh, again, for information about that, you can go to 5milepointspeedway.net, rockdirt.com, or, you can, again, you can go to hagerstownspeedway.com. Whatever show you're going to, just make sure you get out and support one get of those tracks and, and, and enjoy the racing this weekend. You know, we're winding down, like you said. I hate to admit it. You know, I'll be racing in right up through December, February, January. I'll have a race hopefully in every month. So I'm you, looking you at You know what that means, I'm right, looking Mike? good. What? 
Back to PlayStation 2. Yeah, back yep. to video games. We're all yeah. Yeah. Cars, baby. That's coming. Hello, old friend. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> time to dust you back <laughs> off. Uh, oh, man, I'm I'm whipped. I feel like I've been arguing for something we, for like the last <laughs> half an hour or 45 <laughs> well, minutes. And we did it without John. I know. Can you believe it? And we only had five. Listen. Yeah. We only <laughs> yeah. had five of those. What I wanted to do was after the show tonight, I wanted to get everybody to stick around and, and, and say their trademark thing and make a new show open. Because we're at fifty show uh fifty shows now. We gotta we gotta change the face of things for next week somehow, but we can't do that. And I gotta be honest, I don't wanna put in the time to go through a two hour show just to find John saying, Listen what? Alright, well, I don't have a, <laughs> I don't have a we have catchphrases? Yeah, you do. What? Yours is yeah, but I'm a sprint car guy. You say that <laughs> <laughs> uh, Or I could quote the great Johnny Gibson. <laughs> yeah, I'm a sprint car snob. <laughs> <laughs> that was my favorite quote I think was, of the entire year. That was, that yeah, was I'm a best. sprint car snob. I'm like, Yes. <laughs> Somebody admits it. That was great. <laughs> and he didn't he didn't blink about that. Oh no, he was oh, no, he didn't two of miss you. a beat. Yeah, right <laughs> now up front. there's two of you. <laughs> You'd be surprised. You'd be surprised. No, yeah. the, the, hey, you know, those, Rich, those wing the, cars are starting to catch on hey, with me a little. Yeah, leave the state once yeah. in a while, all right? Leave the state <laughs> like, once in a while. It's, yeah, it's, you know, I, I'm going to drag your butt down to freaking Williams Grove on I a tell, Friday night. You know and, what? And you know what? You're going to need and something you, more than that Cavalier. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, listen, I've had a lot of big guys in that Cavalier. We're good to go. I don't think he's talking about me in particular. <laughs> no, he'll just squeeze into there. We'll loop you up and slide into the back seat. I tell you what, um, <laughs> I got no problem getting in and out. We're good there. I'll give you my wife's number. You, if you clear it through her, I'm up for any oh, race listen, you can possibly you go. go to. <laughs> any well, race, yeah. You don't. AKA have that one. Rich just played the wife card, so he doesn't have to go. <laughs> it's like, oh, I got a kid's birthday party. <laughs> I don't, have you? I have a soccer game. Anything the, else, Rich? Anything else you got? The wonder of having, <laughs> yeah, the wonder of having children. <laughs> Yeah. You know what? Rich is you know what? Next Rich. week, Rich, r- next week I can't be here. It's my cat's birthday. I got to take the week <laughs> off. <laughs> awesome. Rich, I, Rich, I hope Rich. that's a hell of a party. Oh, Rich God. has two kids and, he's, and they've had like 17 birthdays yeah. this summer. Oh yeah, my they son's must celebrate like, one my month son's birthdays. like 12 now. <laughs> oh every, man. No, every Poor three Rich. every 3 months. Take it a beating. <laughs> it's not the first Poor, one. Either. I know it won't be the it last. I know last. John's, John's not here, so we got a game. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! Sorry, when, I'll take when, it John's, now. when John's not here, he re- Rich realizes that it's our show and we're just bullies. Oh man! Did I leave anything out of the? Uh, I don't the know. Results? We got. We got, I didn't talk about Delaware State Championships. Let me get right, that quick. Jump that in there. We got. That one was more. the one. Uh, one thing I didn't get. The small box was Richie Pratt Friday night. Rick Lawback won the big box. Ricky Elliott the late models. NASCAR. Matt Kenseth. Ricky Stenhouse. Uh, that's it. That's what everybody Wait, cares about. If I may quote Mike Mallet. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. Did you like that tonight? That was good, right? That was a good one. Yeah, that, that's 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 the clip I'm gonna pull from this for you. Put Is that, that gonna <laughs> me yawning. I'm tired. <laughs> it's all that worrying about you know how his testing scores are gonna come. Uh, yep. My slow. <laughs> <laughs> you should get credit just for coming here and sitting with us. Oh yeah, I get credit. All right. Can I put you in my? I'll make a slow just for this. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> yeah, no problem. That's awesome. <laughs> uh, we did get some email. Um, nice. We wondered. We wondered. Uh, we had somebody that said, "What is this now? A, a hunting and camping show?" Which we worked in for them. Oh yeah, because we were joking around last week were, about it. Um, what else? No love for Brian Sipple. What happened to you guys? Um, Brian Sipple on our show was mm-hmm. was weighing in as we were doing our our picks for Eastern States weekend. Right. Not only did he pick Brett Hearn, but he specifically picked him for a sweep. <laughs> really? And and nailed it. So well, congratulations. So we got to get some. And and Brian, uh, Brian, several times through the course of the year, ended up uh, winning tickets and giveaways, and right. was a part of the show and promoted some events at Canandaigua yeah. Motorsports Park and, and stuff like that. Since and, changed our ticket giveaway procedure. Yes, <laughs> the rules are yeah. now been changed. Thank rules you. Rules have rules have been restructured. We, we so have, I mean, there's we have a simple there's, clause. There's well, there's. It's a simple clause, but it's a simple clause. But there's also the simple uh, qualifier on that too that you can find a way around it. <laughs> <laughs> you cannot be related to Brian Sipple and or a friend, relative, or live in the same ninety mile radius of him. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think his I think his neighbors won four sets of tickets for the course of the <laughs> <laughs> What neighbors? Oh, yeah. those guys. What's their what's what's their last name start with? S. Just pick a letter. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Uh, and. Uh, what else? Uh, are Anything we really? Else? This was this was one that they got my attention the most. Right. Uh, quite simple, um, and at the same time, there's no simple answer. I I don't know how this came about or where this came from, because the information is not really out there. Are you really syndicating with Dirt Track Digest? Now, 
I'm not going to say that there hasn't been some conversations about <laughs> stuff. <laughs> but no, we're not we're not syndicating specifically yet. There's some stuff. I'm pretty sure that Adam is just fucking with me on that one. Just, just screw with me. It's a little late in the show. You're, I'm sorry about that. Wow. Just screw with me on that one. Broke out the granddaddy Whoa, for like, that, that one. That might be a first. What is it? The 50th or so? Uh, is this like the South Park episode where they count down? <laughs> I, they're going to see how many times they can uh, swear on the show? I, think I wasn't Jesus even thinking just, about No, no. I don't, I was, I'm sorry about that. I, think, I wasn't thinking. I wasn't even thinking. I think, you know what? What happened is you're, we're talking like we're at the racetrack. We're not talking like we're on the air. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's. But no, I think something you know, honestly, something could happen with us working with Dirt Track Digest. There's, there's been there's a lot, a of, talk. lot of talk, been... and there's a lot of things that go into it. So when we get it done, you'll know. You'll I mean, sure right now, know. right now, Dirt Track Digest has all the good graces that they, that they could ever hope to have from us. If they want to take the link and and put it up on Dirt Track Digest, by all means, they can share it, syndicate it, whatever you want to call it. Right. That's all done. That's all yep. done. They, they can do it whenever they want. It's up to them. They can grab it off our Facebook page. There's a million different places you can find it between 31stlive.com, yep. Twitter, Facebook, stuff like that. So it's out there. In terms of other things coming, Adam. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> <laughs> We've already emailed about this. Oh, I, mean, I know <laughs> so, what's coming. So, you know, it's it's there's stuff. There's I don't a lot know of good stuff happen. coming. If, it, if, if everything comes we to fruition. We will know more after the parts That has been show. talked about. Then yeah. it's, we are going to like what happens. Yeah, everything's going to be cool. It's, it's going to be great. Finger Lakes 1 is going to be involved. 31st Lap is going to be involved. Or Track Digest is going to be involved. Just be patient. Uh, the other person that I thought might have been doing this are was we, Sonny. Are we two hours in? Yeah. Yeah, we're Holy two. Yeah, we're two hours right now. Sorry, for, Jim. Good luck up on that one. Yeah, for have the a ball of that. Week. And, uh, and then, then uh, why, haven't we, um, why haven't we addressed the photo theft? We're not, and I think we, we didn't have. Do it. I think we've. I think we've remedied that. The long story short was, and I left the comments up there so that all of it could be seen. If you want to find it, go on the Facebook page. You can find it on your own. We didn't steal anything. We, we didn't, didn't do it. We didn't do anything. If you take a photo as a race fan and share it with me or with Mike or with Rich, it's no different than that individual taking that picture. And then subsequently tweeting that picture because everybody that pays attention to the show is race fans. Right. Nobody's taking any claims. So if that's your if that's your gripe, you shouldn't have put it on well, Facebook. As soon as, or you should as, have soon some, as you tag somebody else in it, it's gonna show up on our wall. I didn't so, steal it. I nobody nobody we can't we don't I mean we have our own photos if we use them or we borrow from let's say we use my dad's, we use images by DC, we use yeah. outlaw photos, we have a lot of friends in the industry that let us use their photos that we I've had conversations with that we're allowed to use their stuff. So that's what we do. I mean we don't we Perfect. don't steal photos. Mike and I have been around this. Rich has been around this for way too long to be yeah. to be able to sit here and and have somebody lob grenades at us and yeah, say we that we photos. stole your photo. We don't do that. It doesn't happen. So that I would prefer to be the end of the conversation. The email came. I wanted to at least address it so that person got their uh, whatever out of it that they wanted. You got it. We didn't steal anything. Next. Um. Away we go. Anymore? That it? North is still giving us some stuff about what if we ask K and N filter deal just for the racers. You know, K and N filters across the board. Maybe that would uh, would be something that racers could benefit from. Um, tire shocks, fuel, everything's taken by the promoters and World Racing Group. Maybe we could get the same thing for the guys and gals that actually drive the cars. It's it's something to think about uh, yep. down the line. Uh, wow, I can't believe it. But yeah, we're uh, we're at two oh one right now. Can you believe that? And we're like still got 20 Jim, people Jim hanging with us. going to love us. Yeah. <laughs> he hasn't texted me yet telling us to wrap it. Hey, shut <laughs> up. I have to upload this to YouTube tonight. Yeah, yeah. He, can you maybe stop like and save something for next week? It's like, uh, I don't know if you noticed, but. Every we'll week do, we go two hours. We'll do two hours next week, too. And this week you only had three interviews. We didn't have a 45-minute you know conversation. We had a great discussion about small block engines. We had a great, you know, we got into the crate motor stuff. Yeah, we, we got, got into a, all that. We covered a lot of bases tonight. Yeah, it was fun. And, and, and you know uh, what? The thing is, is nobody on, online was telling us, okay, move it along. Yeah, and a thank you to all the people that are following us online. Absolutely. We, we appreciate and we appreciate the comments. And hey, keep the emails coming. Keep all that coming. And uh, if you want to rip us apart for having bad opinions, uh, go for it. I'm yeah, okay with yeah. it. And, and trust me, they'll get read. Yep. yep. <laughs> <laughs> and we might yell back at you. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Yeah, send, send all the bad stuff. As you can see, I can take a. Beating. Hey, did anybody need the USAC results? There it is. <laughs> uh, uh, no, we no, left those at home with John. Oh darn, John! You know what? Do you have the Dick There's Dragon Jim. Motorsport? Jim. <laughs> I don't. Jim. You know what? I can vouch for him on this. Why that's not updated? That's you, you, my you're, fault. You're helping him it's, fix this. Listen, problem. it's on my server, and there was an issue this <laughs> week where we're, we're pushing where our on, luck. Jim just texted. Us. I know. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on a shared server, and they stopped allowing front page and Microsoft Expression on a shared server because it. Is not being updated anymore from Microsoft, so there's fear that there's virus or whatever. 
So because of that, I'm on a shared server. So now I have to switch everything to a dedicated server, which is double my cost. But I want to be able to use Microsoft front page to update my websites. And that's what all everybody uses that updates the websites that are on my server, a.k.a. John. I showed him how to do it <laughs> via Microsoft front page and expression and whatever. And so that's the, the reason why. So those the process has been begun. It takes up to two days for everything to be finished. And I started working on it earlier this week. It's just something that it's a pain right in the butt to tell, you know, to be honest with it, it sucks. Well, listen, we, we need to get this fixed because I have to finish 31st, so I guarantee my seat so, here. A seat on the show. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, we'll have to, we'll have to, to be to, sure. At the end of the season, we'll have to restructure and decide who's going to have the fourth seat. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna, it's a wild card. <laughs> Fan vote. Fan vote. Fan oh, vote. that's bad news for John. Because <laughs> the fans that are the most vocal Listen. about any of us, they're talking about John. Oh, that's good for John. Thank you. Yep. Depending on what week it is, it could be bad for all of us. Yeah, I know. Well, like, don't worry. If it's summer, I don't show up anyways. <laughs> <laughs> well, let me guess. You got a race to go to? Yeah. No, he's got a birthday party for your kid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to Rich's birthday no, I, party. I don't invite him because I want to make sure he gets here. Yeah, so where'd he go? Oh, that's terrible. Uh-oh, what? All right. We're done. Yeah, I think I think, we, I think we've I think we've, we've been killed done. the second horse. Now we're good. <laughs> <laughs> we, can, we can be done. Uh, oh man! Hold on. Let me back the truck over. Yeah. All uh, right. All right. Well, for John Bombas who couldn't make it, for Rich Post, Mike Mallet, Jessica Power. Wish we had a better connection. We'll talk with you soon. We'll see you at the Parts Peddler Show. For Justin Harris, Ryan Susie, we appreciate everybody hanging out with us on the edition, this edition of the Thirty First Lap, and we'll see you right back here next week. www.fingerlakes1.com